to the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting of July 26, 2023 at 5.07 p.m. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation will be provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will be not suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. You know what? I have a total mental blank. Lisa said in our training on... Um, she said to ask anybody in the audience if they're going to record. Oh, that's it. Um, is anyone going to record this meeting there's nobody in the audience so and nobody on good. so we're all set okay why are we asking that that apparently is a requirement law requirement to ask if people uh, because even some, though we're recording some people may not want personal recordings outside this recording to be out there because they can be manipulated after the fact. And uh -huh. You know, it's also AI or whatever. Oh, AI is going to change it all. No one's going right. to be able to pay attention or know, know what's true. I don't know, there's all kinds true. of stuff, reasons. Yeah. Um, but the it can be taken us. out of context and re-edited and stuff. So all right, we're supposed to ask that. Okay. So um, they have an Chris, opportunity to leave if they don't want to participate. Understood. Right. Okay. And, and Chris is supposed to add into our little blurb here. Okay. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Um, I have some language that I've seen used by another municipality that I can definitely incorporate into the introductory blurb. Perfect. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Sure. Just one more sentence, at least, to ask. <laughs> okay. So we've called it to order. Do we have public comment? Seeing none, we're moving on. And Cassie, our assistant town clerk is here. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you for speaking with me this evening. Again, my name is... You, you know what, Cassie? Sorry. You have to speak right into that. Oh, boy. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for meeting with me today. Um, again, my name is Cassie Sandrell. I'm Deerfield's assistant town clerk. Um, and I'm here to discuss proposed changes to our uh, dog fee schedule, um, which I believe is a bit outdated. Um, and exorbitant in some areas. So um, uh, the components are pretty straightforward. Um, the first item um, is, I believe we need to raise the regular licensing fees. We charge $5 for an altered dog and 10 for unaltered. Um, mm -hmm. These fees were put in place via an approval at the um, annual town meeting in 1996. Um, and you'll see I have attached um, a survey of towns, 33, um, with populations as close to ours, I believe 3,000 in one direction and 3,000 in the other, um, and um, only four charge the $5, um, and 29 charge more, so um, oh, okay. I think that's reasonable to ask um, that we raise those fees, plus the increased cost of everything, materials, postage, mm -hmm. um, time, all of that. Um, I think that's, like I said, reasonable. Um, but this and is also, good work. Oh, very good work. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's very helpful. Um, also, in this section, um, uh, Chapter 60, uh, Section 5A, um, we've adopted the Mass General Law that speaks to not charging um, residents over 70, but we did not place language in the bylaw. I think it needs to be placed directly in the bylaw. Um, so that stays consistent. Um, let's see. All right, so that's pretty much that piece. Um, the second item is to expand the licensing period. Um, our bylaw expresses that March 5th through April 30th is the licensing period when in reality, um, the initial uh, dog license uh, application or information goes out with a census in January. Um, and I think that the bylaw should reflect um, the months long licensing period, um, because I think it would make enforcement of a late fee um, more understandable and tolerable upon enforcement. Um, 
And then lastly, okay. um, could I just ask oh, real quick? Sure. So, so the um, the recommendation for the fees were to um, for a spayed or neutered. Oh yes, yeah. Was going to be what we recommending for the so. I believe that we should raise the um, alter dog fee to ten dollars. Yep. And the unaltered dog to fifteen. Okay. So, um, okay. I'll I'll entertain a motion after she's yeah after, she's, yeah I just want to kind of get oh, some okay. info on what well, she was thinking. Well, there was yep. well there was increasing the prices, but also to add the policy of wavering um, licensing fees to our residents over seventy. That makes sense. Which I think it's is a wonderful yeah, idea. It's yep. actually a, a mass general law. Oh, perfect. Um, so, but we have the option to adopt it or not. Yeah. So I think that's uh, I, I I think yeah. And well, then late um, yeah. <laughs> late fees. Um. And then the late fee, yeah. So um, this has been an interesting adventure going yeah. from the um, uh, regular licensing to um, the late fee um, area. So we had um, to date 802 dogs licensed in Deerfield, um, close to 700 were licensed um, prior to the um, deadline. Um, and after that, it it seemed that the folks that were coming in um, for various reasons um, just wanted to follow the rules and get their dogs licensed. Mm -hmm. um, and the $50 fee seemed exorbitant. Okay. Um, and also on the survey, you'll see that um, um, of the 33 communities represented, only six charge $50 or more, 27 charge less. We are in the minority. Mm -hmm. um, there is a mass general law that speaks to punishment of no less than $50, but it is ambiguous. It's vague. It doesn't speak to late fees. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's why the communities have chosen their own fees. I recommend um, $20. Um, and I also believe that um, residents over 70 should be exempt from the late fee as well. We have been charging folks $50 for the late fee. Um, over 70. And I, okay. I think that doesn't make sense with the um, spirit of the initial um, provision for folks over 70. Yeah, see, so yeah. in, I, in, the, in the language or the papers that are in our package, yep. it says concerning bylaw 60 of 5F change the late fee from 50 to 25 to 35. Right. You just said $20. I did. And so, I'm just trying to figure out, you wrote this, right? I, right, right. So what What's behind your further reduction? Right. So I think that was my initial thought um, to, um, you know, cutting the fee in half seemed reasonable. But then when I was looking at the communities um, and I also compared, um, so the real estate overdue fees is 15 to $45. Oh. So to have a late fee for a dog license, um, even at just 35, 25 even seemed a bit high. So I don't know. I I, I mean, I leave that They're to discussion. Sort of apples and oranges though, because in addition to the late fee, you have There's interest fees. Definitely. And so it's Most an open-ended cost to somebody who's a delinquent taxpayer. Sure. Um, some communities do have a structure where they have a first time you know, late that. fee um, for a certain period of time. And then the second portion, I mean, that that I think could be a way mm -hmm. to lower that initial late fee. Right. And then have the folks that really push it to the end of the year or close yeah. to the end of the year get the larger fee. Um, I, because I, people are just, it seems, are just trying to do the right more. thing. I appreciate that people are at least registering their dog. I mean, right. that's the whole intent is to register the dog. And, sure. and you know, there has to be a, a kind of a fee if you're not following the rules like mm -hmm. everybody else. But right. I agree, it doesn't have to be right. um, as high. And maybe a first and second, if it's manageable by you, it might might be a good way to, sure. to do that yep. to you guys. But Definitely. okay, great. That's... Well, I would entertain a motion that we would um, increase the fees uh, from $5 to $10 um, for altered dogs and unaltered dogs from 10 to 15. So moved. Seconded. Any further discussion? Oh, may I ask a question? So this will be effective January 1st. Yes. Since the cycle goes. Yes. yes. Calendar year. Okay. Sure. Sorry. Fantastic. No, yep. that's okay. Yeah. Great. 
And, and sorry to butt in here. Um, Cassie, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this was an article that would have to go forth before town meeting um, mm -hmm. in the fall. I did check that and you all will have to um, help me with the language here. Sure. Um, it does say- Can you still speak into the oh, mic? so sorry. Um, let's see, chapter 10, section 139. I have it highlighted in the packet mm -hmm. um, for you all. The fee or license shall accept as otherwise provided be determined by a city or town, provided, however, that no fee shall be increased without a majority vote or the city um, of the city or town council or the voters present at a town meeting. So does that mean you all can vote to increase or does it I have to go? We're, what we're going to do is, is vote it to move forward okay to put town meeting and then town meeting will um um town meeting will support it is that wouldn't that be correct i, I think for the 70 and over we could change the fees on dog fees kind of at our discretion i believe but but the, to put something into a bylaw i think we would obviously have to go before town meeting the language that the assistant clerk just read would indicate that you would need to vote to put the item on the warrant for the town meeting, and then the warrant article would then be passed by a majority, so simple majority as opposed to a two thirds majority. That that's that's fees for Americans with Disabilities Act, but regular fees to anybody would not, correct? Typically, if the fee is in a bylaw, you would modify the bylaw by a vote right. rather than just on your own state. We've always tried to take take fees out of a bylaw, correct? I mean, you'd want more of a policy um, discussion when. But you even, have... but even it, you would still have to go to town meeting to, to take it out of the bylaw. Correct. Is it currently in the bylaw? Yes. yes. Yeah. So our bylaw says it's five dollars. Correct. Yes. And yeah. it doesn't have anything for altered or unaltered. Oh, it does. It okay. does. It yes. does. Yes. Five and ten. Okay. Five yes. and ten. Yeah. I think maybe we think of about this and, and figure out is there a way to pull the fees out of the bylaw and but put the bylaw of the 70 dollars because if we ever want to change this in the future every time we have to change a fee you got a little town meeting it just seems like we're always trying to get away from that right in the future the other thought i had though is if we um the mic. Gosh, it's okay bad habit sorry <laughs> um if um at ta the town meeting, um, there is the vote to ra or, um, change the um, raise the fees, the regular fees, but not to lower the um, late fees. It may appear that we're just, you know, doing one oh, and not yeah, the other no, we'll, if we, we have them both. together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we would, okay. we would have to change the bylaw to exclude language, and, and I think late fees should be taken out as well. Exactly. I mean, oh, anything yeah. that's a fee structure should be outside of bylaw so that you don't have to go back right. to the voters every time you need to raise a fee because of inflation or whatever. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. now I, I see what you're yep. saying. But the 70, the, the 70, sure, the 70. would definitely need to be in the bylaw. Great. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So all those in favor? Of what? <laughs> of the motion to increase the fees from five to ten dollars for altered dogs and unaltered dogs from ten to fifteen, as proposed by our assistant town clerk. Yes, in in conjunction with taking it to town meeting to oh, remove yeah, that that's from that'll be a separate. Process. Okay, yep. great. Yep. So all those in favor, Trevor McDaniel, aye. Tim Hilchi, aye. Carolyn Ness, I. And then the next motion would be to make sure that um, we add to the bylaw um, that um, residents over 70 would be uh, wavering the fee. Yeah. Would you make fee. that motion? Yeah, one sec, uh, fees. It's our pol we want we want to have the in the bylaw yeah. the policy to waive fees for those older mm -hmm. residents over 70. And service dogs or not? Because it says service dogs defined by Americans Americans with Disability Act, semicolon, dogs owned by no, persons age 70. That's the reason I say that because you can have any, you can just declare you have a service mm -hmm. animal. Got it. By, um, you know, like when we set up a shelter, mm -hmm. anybody can bring a snake in, anything. They just have to, if it's a, they can declare it's a service. Right. So we, we're not going by that definition. Okay. We're not going to put it in. I wouldn't support it, in other words. Right. I just want to make sure that when you're adopting chapter section 139, that you're not already adopting that. I don't think so. 
Okay. I think that has to be ex um, listed as you said. Mm -hmm. But the de how they how they defined a service animal, right, is so loosey goosey that no. Okay. Um, so I'd make a motion to um, put on the town warrant, move forward. Um, uh, dogs owned by persons age seventy and over would be exempt from uh, from the from the fees. Late fee. The licensing fee. Licensing fee. This is saying late fee exemption. But we're going to do that next. Or oh, we're just exe we're we're so exempting. We're gonna, we're going to exempt them from registering their dog, even though we might have an interest in having the dog. No, no the licensing fee. fee. Just the just the fee. Yeah, they still need okay. to register. All right. Yep. So you second that. <laughs> How many people are older than 70 and down? Uh, yeah, second. Okay. <laughs> well, if you get a dog, have that registered. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Robert McDaniel, aye. Tim Hilchie, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. And then the late next fee. is the late fee. Let's discuss that a little bit. So, do we want a first and a second fee, or do we want to just do reduce the fee altogether? Or reduce it and, you know, maybe it make it sound like $20 and then 25 or 30 if it's late. If it's excessively late. And that, those dates would need to be figured out. But what you're thinking the how, first How much months. does it, you think it costs you to, you know, mail somebody the late fee notice? Oh, gosh. Um, so I mailed out close to 500 of them. Um and um, I didn't calculate the cost. Um, postage is up to 63 cents yeah, a letter. Yeah, so quite a bit. Um, plus the time. Right. Um, so I guess I would be also then in support of a of a lower fee, like $20 initially. And what are you thinking for a two month or three month time period? Um, or you know, I, I hadn't really um, uh, Flushed out the time frame. I um, I'd be open to, to yeah. discussing it. I feel like just... a couple months, like something happens, you're in the hospital, whatever it might happen in your life. It, right. Sometimes the first month gets away from you, but by that second month, if you right. you do, you know, you get get your dog registered, then we're good to go. Um, with with a with a small late fee, if you're three How about twenty five and months beyond, thirty five. Twenty and thirty five sounds fair to me. So you spent three hundred fifteen dollars mailing out late fees, mm -hmm. right? And that doesn't count the, the time it took you to do this, right? right. So probably we're talking about at least six hundred or seven hundred dollars to send these things out, right? Um, so I'm not in favor of. I would say I would be more in favor of twenty five and fifty. People have to take responsibility for following the law. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, and if we're and if we're going to waiver the fees for this late fee as well for the over seventy, that will accommodate persons if they're in the hospital, they're there. in rehab for a couple months or whatever. Yeah, and I'm certainly not. I, I I certainly agree, Trevor. You've got a good point. Um, I have no problem with you know life emergency being an excuse. Yeah. Right. You know, but. Um, you know how do how do we write a bylaw that has all you, this you stuff don't. in it? You know. Um, is there a line that uh, at the discretion of the clerk's office, something everybody's going to want to have, they're going to have, you know, regards, and no. you're so nice, Cassie, we won't collect the late fee. <laughs> there, everyone want to take you out of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would, bad guys. <laughs> okay. So I, yeah, I, um, well, I, I'm, if you guys think 20 and 35 is okay. I do. Uh, and we're going to take it outside the bylaw, then we can raise it at a later date. Of course, so if, if we find it being... I, I, like if you see it, a, 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 because we've reduced the late fee, mm -hmm. if you just kind of keep track of it, yep. and if you feel like we you are seeing a trend of more late fees because we reduced the late fee, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let us know. Um, that's we'll, if we get we're successful in the October meeting, we'll mm -hmm. get it pulled out and we can readjust. Sure. Yeah. That sounds great. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So, so I'll make a motion for the first late fee to be reduced to $20 and the second late fee after two months would be the um, uh, $35. We'll second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Oh, and 
Um, and it is our policy to waive the late fee for residents over 70. Yes. And the time frame. The bylaw says March 15th through April. Yeah, back, we'll do that yep. in a separate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then Great. so that we need one more motion to um, change the licensing period to April 30th. Um, beginning January 1 through April 30th. Okay. I believe. So we're, we're right. beginning uh, the licensing period will be January 1st through April 30th. Would okay. be the motion. So moved. Seconded. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim oh. Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. And all this subject to being handled through the bylaws. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Kenzie. Thank really you. appreciate Very your work thank on you. that. And thank you for addressing something yeah, that aggravates people. Really helps to <laughs> and uh, and also organize. what address you know helps our residents you know that are elderly because right. Right. we you know it's, it's not we're not here to we're here to cover our costs but not to be prohibitive. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Have a good um, night. Thanks, Cassie. Thank you, Cassie. Chris, could you? Um, I had sent you an email a while back. Um, a, a, with a letter for, from Thomas Adams, Joan, uh, Joel Thomas Adams, about the dog hearing. Uh, could you print that out for us? And we'll need a copy for the, their lawyer or Kate. It would have um, been sure. would have been probably ten days ago, maybe. Yeah, let me find that. It was um, before the flooding. Okay. Okay. Um, we probably can't do this before. Oh, it's almost 5.30 now. It's 5.30 now. It is well, 5.30. Okay. By the time they get Come to on. the seats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have our joint meeting. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think you have in the panel, we have Rachel who was supposed to be here. So you need a quorum, don't you? There's Andrea. Oh, there's Andrea. Yeah. There's Andrea. Hey, Andrea. One, two. Hi, Peggy. Four. Hi, Peggy. Yeah, well, it's one, two, three. Uh, Peggy doesn't count. No, She's I know. Not, yeah. yeah. She no, does no. count, but not for <laughs> Yeah, she does count. I mean, we know you count, Peggy. <laughs> How do you she feel about that, Peggy? <laughs> yeah, we're, so, yeah, we're a little early, so we're yeah. maybe on time. Well, but. we can wait a couple minutes. Okay, yeah. so, when, so when they do come, then we will have to open the meeting. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. That's what I um, okay. And Peggy, let let me please clarify. I did not mean that you don't count because you know I've worked with you for years, and I think you're wonderful. No I'm worries. Not, you don't count towards the quorum. <laughs> Peggy's I'm absolutely good. understood. Okay. Um, I think we could. We out? yeah. We, let's let's go to the review the sewer abatement. So I I'm not going to um, because of all the flooding. I did not have a chance to talk with. We had a lot, our hands full. Yep. So um, I've got a call into Heather. I, I don't have an answer back from her on the Baranowski cleaners. Um, okay. And the other one was Robert J. Decker the third. There, um, it just says first floor toilet running, bathroom sink leaking, but there is no. Um, you know, we always require um, a receipt from the plumber that things have been fixed and that this was a leak. I don't have any of that for this. Okay. And it's it is um, it is higher than normal. So I mean, if you look at the consistency mm -hmm. of his I bills, it would warrant. Um, I think it would warrant uh, a um, small abatement. But I we we usually want to know that a receipt from a plumber that it's been fixed, and there it doesn't say that. You know, okay. have any receipt. We usually always want a plumber. Mm -hmm. kind of okay. And interestingly, I when I looked at it, it didn't seem it's fourteen thousand gallons, and it didn't seem an extreme Out of the norm. It didn't, yeah, it didn't seem extreme to me. So right, um, you know, not knowing who lived in the this is an apartment building, right? Uh, or is this a I don't think so. No, this residence. is a personal. This is a. Oh personal. no, this is North Main Street. It is an apartment building. Yeah. So whether there's more people living there or not this year, the, I don't know. So don't yeah, and, and yeah. So it's yeah. My question is: Is this just a tenant who suddenly 
you know, their son came home or their daughter came home from school and they were living with them and the, mm -hmm. they were using, doing three or four showers, you know, uh, be. it doesn't look to me to be extreme, but if you think it is, you're much more it just to it this. looks a little higher it's than little, the history, but yeah. you're right. It could be life changes that could cause that, but there's no there's no uh, no plumbing paperwork saying that there was a problem here and we fixed it. And here's my okay. plumbing bill. Yeah. That's generally what we do. Okay, so we're just going to go on then. Yep, um, and I'll have an answer on the next week on the other uh, review and signature of um, MOU MOU for the Franklin County Solid Waste. Management district. I'll make a motion to approve the MOU uh, between the town of Deerfield and Franklin County Solid Waste Management uh, regarding third party inspection of the town's municipal transfer station. And I'll second that. Thank Any you. further discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then there's one other. Um, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, I think this is the MOU between the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District and the town of Deerfield for the um, hazardous waste um, collection. Um, it's, uh, it's, participating towns have appropriated the funds required for regional household hazardous waste collection event. I just don't know what our dollar amount was. It We budgeted 5,000, but I don't know what we, it's asking us to reply back with a, a dollar amount. We'd have to get that from Brenda, I think, or Kevin. Uh, yeah. And also, um, if the prices have gone up, you know, we, so why don't we um, approve this based on the fact that we want to participate mm -hmm. and that we'll have um, Chris or Casey put the dollar amount in? Yeah. Um, would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Yep. Um, all those so, in favor of that much? We have a second. Oh, second. Thank you. All, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. So Whoops. Trevor needs to sign that one, right? We have a quorum, by the way. Oh, you do? Oh, great. We do. So we can start. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right. So Wait, the, you know what? This is the other one that we just did. So, um, just a minute. Yeah, we're going to get messed up. Okay. Which one is that? This is the hazardous so waste. Two of them, right? Yeah. Yes, there are two. Okay. Well, you while you're signing, yeah, you okay, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, yeah. I'm going to open the meeting, the planning board meeting of July 26, 2023, and I'm going to take attendance. Andrea Leibson here. Annalie Wolfcole present. Okay, Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord here. Denise Mason here. We've got a quorum, so we can proceed. We're supposed to have someone else come, but she's not here. Okay, and Peggy Sloan, <laughs> of course, is leading. Oh, so okay. did you all, I sent some items to Chris. I'm not sure whether you guys have had a chance to look at them. At least you'll have them for reference. And we've been going yep. over chapter 179. And Peggy's been absolutely wonderful to work with. She's doing the lion's share of the work. <laughs> or just so, um, so we've got a bunch of different items. So I'm going to start off with, uh, let's see, it's the bylaw, it's uh, 4474, and it's, does the town have a general bylaw covering hiring of outside consultants? What's, what's the question? Sorry. Does the town have a general bylaw covering hiring of outside consultants? I I believe it's procurement. We just go by the procurement law. I mean, that's required. I don't think it's a bylaw. Yeah. Okay. The town the, the town meeting uh, um, affords the select board the right to hire, you know, go into contract to hire people yep. each year. Um, for, I think for a um, time frame of three to five years, something like that. I think it's five years. Um, but I don't think there's a bylaw per se for hiring consultants. Okay, I I don't believe so, Peggy. I think we I think it's this. just we do procurement guideline. You know, the yeah. state law. It's just uh, for the planning board. Um, uh, I've suggested just adding a section on hiring of outside consultants, so it's very clear within the zoning bylaws that the special permit granting authority 
have access to a variety of consultants if they need that assistance and an identification of the accounting requirements in terms of special accounts, et cetera. So it's just uh, laid out a number of communities have these. So that's just one of the proposed additions to the to the um, the zoning bylaws. All right. So Peggy, is this this is specific to the planning planning board zoning board sphere? This was a a bylaw you were suggesting for them. Yes, it would be in your zoning bylaws. So it would be specific to activities covered by the zoning bylaws, such as special permits or site plan review. They always have access to, I'm trying to think of how that, how that works now um, and who, is, who authorizes. You know, well, I mean, if it's that. related to the planning board, the planning board. They have the revolving fund, right? Yeah. And they would then just go. Yeah. I mean, that's how you fund it normally. And is this in, is this in, uh, in addition? So is this in a case when you're reviewing a site plan and you want to hire somebody and the, and the applicant doesn't agree? Or, or is this in addition yeah, to? Um, where does it come into play, Peggy? So if if there is a disagreement about um, the consultant that's being hired, there's a specific appeal process to the select board um, that's spelled out in the bylaw. Okay. So it's just making things, I think, clear. And, and a number of communities also have these in their general bylaws just to provide some guidance. Um, but it just seemed like a good thing to have uh, within your zoning bylaws so that it's um, it's clear. For planning board members what the procedures are and and what the requirements are under state law and can you just get us that language so yeah we can, or maybe it's been somewhere around has it been passed through or somewhere we or have it, some know, here in the, we could just then read it 4474 it says fees a filing fee of two thousand dollars shall be submitted with the application to cover the cost of processing and initial engineering review in the event that the zoning board of appeals determines the circumstances necessitate expert technical review costing more than the amount of the filing fee that either expense shall be paid by the applicant. Do you have, is that, do we have a copy of that somewhere? No. Oh. I can get it to you. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, just it, it, after, not now or anything, yeah, yeah, but just, yeah. yeah, just so I could read it. Yeah, I'm not that quick, Trevor. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And, and did you want the new section of the zoning bylaws that's being proposed? Would that be helpful? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. okay. Read these items. All right. Okay. The next one on is performance standards. There are a couple different things. The first one is should some performance apply, such as an increase in traffic generation, hours of operation, or and or hazardous materials under performance standards? That's forty nine hundred. So maybe just if I could give a little background, Denise. So apparently there was um, a question. Hang on just a second. <laughs> I've got a distress. No worries. Take your time. So, the, so it, just to, for recap for me, so Peggy looked over the zoning bylaws and was offering um, areas to strengthen them is that the idea We're, We're, yeah i mean it's it's really clean up hurdle. making sure that everything i mean some for instance um the state has just uh, done a new floodplain bylaw that sort of um i can't think supersedes the one that we currently have we just did a couple of years ago two years ago i think we just did i'm not sure ago, right? how long ago that was it was um it was our first outdoor meeting at frontier during covid oh, really? i think okay yeah, yeah he's back. Not here. Uh, Hi. That's okay. No, we had a question on the floodplain zoning. Yes. Is it is there new floodplain zoning, or is this the same one that we tried to update a couple of years ago? So there's new state and federal regulations, um, and a model bylaw that was issued by the state um, that uh, communities need to adopt those provisions in order to remain eligible for the National Flood Insurance Program. Oh, I think that's what we did. Yeah, we, we did, did that. It. We did that. Well, I did compare your um, existing floodplain bylaw to the new model, and there were some sections that needed to be added. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, 
when did the state do theirs? Just just this past year or something? Um, it's uh, probably about two years ago. They issued this new model and communities have been updating it. So I think it may have been shortly after you uh, Must be. adjusted some of your provisions. I think we did like three years ago or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was our first outdoor pandemic meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the new requirements is that you need a floodplain administrator that needs to be a town employee. So some towns, if they have planners, they're appointing the planner. It, if you had a conservation agent, it could be a conservation agent or the town administrator for smaller communities. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I did mention that to Chris. So it would either be, I mean, my suggestion would be either Chris or the planner that we hopefully will hire soon. Right. <laughs> so not to lay anything more on our town administrator. Right. Exactly. Yep. So, yep. and is, is this still in the context of this 4,900 performance standards? Yes. No, this is a separate section of your zoning bylaws. No, that's I think, sorry, I got it interrupted, but the, the issue was, um, I guess there were, uh, um, someone had wrote in about the new tourism oriented district overlay district, and they had some concerns about some of the buy right uses and potential uh, impacts. Um, so for example, hotels, there's no scale size, you know, for example, you could have defined hotels as a boutique hotel and maybe a smaller scale, but right now it just says hotels. And so I think there was some concern about, well, if it's a buy right use, there's no special permit and you're not doing any site plan review. Do you want to consider having some of the performance standards apply? Um, that you have in that section for other uses? Or do you want to think about whether or not um, you have a new definition for hotel that maybe limits the scale? Or would you um, like perhaps to consider requiring a special permit or site plan review for some uses where you have more concerns about things like traffic generation? Um, so those were just some examples of performance standards that maybe you might want to pull back in to the tourism overlay district for certain uses. Just, I, I think that we sort of agreed on that and we came up, I, I think, in speaking with someone, they, they mentioned boutique hotel. So I looked up the definition of boutique hotel and that can be anywhere from 10 to 100 rooms, but I think that would only be in the C2 district. So, and once again, we have our, um, let's forget the name of it, the um, tourism overlay. Tourism. No, not the tourism overlay, Andrea. The uh, so we we can only have so many of we can we can only have so many. We we couldn't have Ramada in, for instance, more than likely. Um, well, oh, we're talking about our um, yeah. I can't think of our, that. It's terrible. Yeah, sounds like two words. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the chain bylaw that we have. Yes, you know, yes. The franchise, franchise. So Champney, uh, Deerfield Inn could could do eight more Deerfield Inns in Deerfield or, or anywhere right. else. And once they reach a certain point, then it would fall under the, yeah. the bylaw yeah. that we have for chain stores. Right, yeah. exactly. Wouldn't prohibit it. It would just mean it would fall under a different set of right. rules. Right. So. But so we, we could define boutique hotel and, and think about realistically the land that we have and what could we consider being a boutique boutique hotel you know not like um what is it the red roof inn probably not something well I, I was going to say I'm I think we're also in support of a boutique hotel but not necessarily the sprawl of a chain hotel right so I I mean I'm comfortable with the definition of boutique because that sort of sh shows that you're trying to limit the size versus these giant chains mm -hmm. and the chain should tr trigger the other bylaw anyway. That's true. But right. so it seems like you have some protection mm -hmm. anyway, but this is like double protection because it clarifies what the definition of hotel is. So, I mean, I'm fine with okay. boutique. So I'm just trying to figure out what, what we have is a, we have an email from Denise that says, to Chris that says, these are the things we want to talk about. Do you in fact have suggested language for 4,900 4, changes? I mean, I know you're going to give us stuff. I just, 
uh, or are you asking us our opinion about whether you should develop language? I'm just trying to figure out where in the process you are on these bylaw proposed bylaw changes. We felt that it would be a good idea to have a conversation with the select board and this. Okay, I'm sure good. that we'll come up with the language. I'm sure yeah. Peggy will help us come up with that <laughs> to good. do that. But um, I, oh, it, I, I I see what you're trying to say. So so let's just start back yeah. up with the 4900. Okay. Um, I. Truthfully, I think it would be great to include um, some language that would increase, um, you know, you have a performance status, um, performance standard that would talk about traffic generation, hours of operation, and if there's hazardous material involved. I don't think anybody has any problem with that, right? Okay. A review list of uses by right. You know what? That's really great. We should do this on a regular basis anyway. Um, yeah, uh, because, you know, definitions and businesses change, mm -hmm. you know, who would have thought zooming, you know, pre pandemic. So, yeah. you know, any, any businesses evolve. So let's look at it and see if we need to update them okay. regularly. Okay. Or do we have any problems with some of the ones that we've included by right? That means, do we add any or would you take any away? I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? interested in learning about them yeah yeah, yeah i mean would approve or disapprove or no no yeah. but i meant look at the review yeah, yeah for sure okay well, the, the just follow up before you continue on that i in the same way that we remove fees from stuff i mean some bylaws can be written so that there's there's um it refers to a chart mm -hmm. so you can ch make changes more easily um Right, so the bylaw is kind of evergreen, and then you're just changing the charts that it's referring right. to. Right, and also in the same, well, go ahead, Carolyn. No, no, that's fine. I just, the, the only thing is the reason why it's not that simple is because um, by right has to be town meeting approved because it's zoning right. related. Right, yeah, I wasn't speaking about necessarily yeah. by right, but yeah, okay. So, um, but I think a, a review, maybe not every year, because that's, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but every couple of years, let's just put it on as a regular thing. Okay. Um, so you can do a review. I'd be excited about that. Um, consider whether some such hotels would require a site plan review or special permit. I, I think it would trigger a special permit or we would want it to trigger a special permit just because of generation or in impact, the traffic generation and the impact on our communities. Right. When you think about it, there isn't very much space okay. left for a hotel type of thing. So we're, we're, we're encroaching on people's neighborhoods. So I, I think having a, a special permit is not a big, bad deal. Zoning nonprofit so, event. Go just ahead. to continue, um, so the review list of uses by right. That is the next thing is in re re relation to by right. In other words, consider whether such such as hotels should require. Because I mean, we did this tourism overlay, which was very vague. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, when we talked about it, we all said yes. This is, still has to go through the conservation commission. It still has to go through planning, but it should be explicit so that there's no question. So I would definitely want to, you know, consider that. Yeah, and Tim, of... I, I think that's what precipitated the conversation because it was a little too vague. Right. So I think it is better to be a little more specific. Mm -hmm. Yep. So okay. I, I don't, I, you don't have any problem. No. Nope. Good. Okay. Great. Zoning nonprofit event. Uh, no such event shall exceed seven days in length and shall require a permit for the select board. I, I, don't, I guess I don't understand that one. It says pursue an article, in, the, but there's no article. It, oh, oh, <laughs> it's, you it's mean it's just the article hanging so in we, our bylaws? We just didn't know in the general bylaws. Huh. Is there a, a nonprofit event bylaw? Yeah, the, well, the not yeah, the nonprofit event could be anything that a church does, or civic organization, or um, uh, the Deerfield Craft Fair, anything that benefits oh, I the see. Community. So you're saying that it has to be anything less than seven days, really? It says here, 
no, no such no, event no. will the, the, the question is that it says it says pursuant to article but there is no article there it doesn't say what article in the general bylaws so that was the question that we had because there was no number we don't know what what article it is in the general bylaws so in other words we'll look at it hey, we'll look at we've got these very abbreviated things so you're saying that there is no article number that Right. Governs. That is, that is correct. Nonprofit events. There's no article. But it's referred to. It's referred to, but there's no right. follow up in, right. within the bylaw That's structure. So obviously, we should figure out, right. you know, where it is. Yes. Yeah. And if, and if not, <laughs> insert whatever should be That's there. That's the question. Or just end it, period, after select board. No such event shall exceed seven days in length and shall require a permit from the select board, period. Okay. Is that, that, how does that sound? Yeah, I think that's fine. But if there is a section of the general bylaw that addresses it, it would be good to know the actual number. So look, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I think that's probably it's what... just missing. It's just missing in your zoning bylaws right now in the definition section. Yeah. Okay. So that's a question. And so who will be able to look through that? Well, I think that's a legal thing, right, Matt? Code. I mean, yeah. Somebody has to either look either it's at in our bylaw or it isn't. It's not. It isn't. Okay. And okay. if it's not in there and you can't find a number for it, then that would indicate it's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. uh, maybe maybe it's referenced somewhere and it, there's just not a separate a separate article. So I guess we're going to have to research, right? Okay. Who should no. do that research? That's a question. Yeah, maybe the planner when we hire him. Right. Or okay. Her. Okay. Her or him, I should say. All right. Or, that. I or think them, so. or they. Or they, you know. Or whomever. Okay. All right. Um, and as, and as then for the tourism overlay district, you just want the hotel's definition? Yes. I Clarify, mean, you were like, we, we can come up with the boutique, boutique hotel and that it's, I mean, the definition that I looked up, it's anywhere from 10 to 100. So, I mean, but that doesn't mean that's what it has to be. It could be 10 to 75. It could be 10 to 80, whatever. So we can, so there's yeah. the general boutique hotel definition. And then we're wondering if Deerfield wants its own boutique hotel definition. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we need hotels. We know that. Um, we we there, we we uh, we know that there is a need for hotel, right? But um, one of the ways you could think about it is how many parking, how much square footage in parking, mm -hmm. and for each room is required, and then the square footage for each room. Yeah. So you have an idea of how much impervious surface that you're talking about on a plan, mm -hmm. and then yeah. just think about where that water was going to go and where you would plop it down so then you will get an idea of what the range is right. for rooms yeah and act actually right now i don't have a real frame of reference as to how many rooms are in the deerfield in or how many rooms are in the mm. what is that the quality in in deer in uh, greenfield so yeah so yeah I'll check do a little on that. study and okay. yeah i'll check I, on that I, and then I we think, can come back to that i think mm. well, you just need to take in consideration what the square footage per room is parking places and then right. what kind of impact it would have from a pervious surf, you know, pervious surface now instead of being open because you're going to take care of the stormwater. So Peggy, um, a uh, question for Peggy. Um, I'm assuming they, that have you seen any bylaws for 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 this kind of issue that you think are um one we should be considering um well i do, i don't know that so much there's um bylaws but most communities that i'm familiar with for example hotels because of their potential scale often are a special permit um so i think it's good to add a definition and then i think the planning board needs to discuss more whether or not they would also like to recommend a special permit or a site plan review process so i think it's it's two pieces one is to define the type of hotel you'd like to have mm -hmm. and and that would help with the scale but then whether or not you want to have some review or as i had mentioned previously have some performance standards apply and that may deal with uh, the traffic generation. Um, I need to look at your impervious surfaces, but 
you might have a performance standard there. I know there was some open space requirements. Um, so the planning board can look at those different issues and come back with some recommendations. It looks like Andrea has her hand up. It's sort of hard to see. Yeah, it is. Yes, I, see. Yes, I do. Sorry, the Deerfield Inn has 24 rooms. Thank you. You're yeah. welcome. And now, I so this is the uh, review of uh, uses by right and the tourism overlay district, which was rather quickly pushed through, was vague about a lot of things. And so is this a reaction to that vagueness? And um, yes. do we want to make it simpler? I mean, obviously, define a hotel, whatever you want to do, but I would like to see the bylaw really as simple as it can be, which means you don't have a definition for every type of use that's contradictory. So is there a way that maybe a special permit would be a good way to do it because then it gives some leeway and flexibility to yeah. decision making rather than prescribing a hotel has to have this, whereas, you know, a precision pilot type operation, which is manufacturing, has a different set of things. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't have an answer to asking uh, a question. Uh, yes, you might not need the definition at all if you made it a special permit so that you could look at everything on a case by case basis. Okay, thanks. Okay. So you do have a list of uses by right, and then there's also a list of uses that require special permit in the trans in the tourist overlay district. So you could just switch hotels into that second category of requiring a special permit. That yeah. makes sense. Excellent. That'd be okay. good. Okay, great. And we did have another question, but I don't think I don't think that pertains to the select board right now, but I didn't didn't let Peggy know. I did speak with town council. So as far as the floodplain, it still comes under the planning board's purview and it's not the conscom. Okay. So I did uh, alert the rest of the planning board that we don't have to meet with the cons come since it's not it's not you know they're not responsible for that okay okay um, and were we thinking about um in context of uh by right uses and special permits for hotels are we looking at the planning board being the uh special permit granting authority as opposed to some other board i th yes i think so yeah mm -hmm. Okay, good. I mean, you're going to do the site plan review, you might as well. Right, grant yeah. permit. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's the planning board in your um, POD district. Yeah. Right. And the, the, other, the other question, once again, was I checked with the town clerk, and there was something on 4432, the assessor's map 16, lot 13, does it exist? And it doesn't it's now it's now i forget what it was but it's now the um fire station so oh we, over we, on five and ten yeah we can make make a change to that is yeah. the, was the um ems building part of that lot too or is that that was separate i'm Pro not sure probably if, i don't remember how yeah. we separated that when that was built right or whether it was his own separate parcel or not i can't remember I think it was separate, right? Because Channing Beat had owned it and then given it to the town. Right. No, it's separate. It's separate from the because the fire district remember okay. is not town it's owned. Not town owned. Okay. Right. Got it. So we're basically in support of them investigating all of the areas we talked about. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for doing the work. <laughs> thank you. Well, well that yes. A big thank uh, you. Thank you, Anna Lee and Rachel and yeah. Yeah. Andrea for showing up too. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, I mean, is there anything else you'd like? I I think I've covered everything that I had. I don't know whether I missed anything. Well, we, we did have the floodplain, don't forget. Rachel's yes, particularly you know, interested in the floodplain. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yes. Even though she lives on a mountain, the oh, flood hill. <laughs> so am I. My road is still closed, Trevor. Oh, it's been rough. I can't bike. We were kind yeah. of Yeah, in your front yard? <laughs> yeah. Well, in the side yard, but yes. <laughs> I had to go bike in the other way. Nice trust me, it's a lot harder. Yeah. It's been okay. a rough, rough week. It's Venice, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, possibly. More rain tomorrow. Yes, I hear you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, unless anybody else, does, I, can't, I can't see anything. Does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, thumbs up from Rachel. No. We're good. Annalise, good. Thumbs up. 
great. Let's see, uh, well, thank you for joining here. us. All right. And I took a note about the floodplain and everything else. Okay, it. great. Excellent. So for the planning board, do I hear a motion to? I move that we adjourn. Okay. Second. <laughs> do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Um, Emily, I. Okay. Everyone's got an eye. Andrea. Andrea. Yes. Yes. Rachel, Thank yes. You. Emily, Emily, yes. Denise, yes. All right. Thanks, Rachel. everyone. Yep, Rachel said, Thank, yeah. you, Thank, you, Thank you, Peggy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you all. Night. Appreciate your work. Thank you, Denise. Okay, thanks. Welcome. Thanks for coming to meet with us on this. Yeah. I, I, we we just a little bit of misunderstanding of, of what you wanted from us, but yeah. this is perfect. Yeah, Thank you for coming. Just, just trying to clean things up. Oh no, no, it's wonderful. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Stay cool. Okay. Um, we have a few. Stick around if you want. You know, I I do I do have another <laughs> question. I guess. Hi, Emily. Yeah, I do have another question that doesn't have anything. I did speak with Tim. I don't know if you know when um, Melissa Hoffer came out and she was at Barway Farm. I was able to go over there, and Tim was able. And it was very quick. We didn't even know until the morning, and so Ma and I spoke very briefly to Melissa, and we talked about you know we were working towards a net zero campus here, and she said we said we'd love for you to come out. She said, "Oh well, I'm free on Mondays." So. Uh, would you invite her? Not yet. I wanted to talk to you. About oh, yeah, that. great. Get things organized. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to talk about that. Do that sooner rather than later. Um, I would love to have her come before her Mondays are no longer her free. Right. Um, I think that's critical because we need we need yes. to make sure yeah she's aware that we're trying very hard to okay. do all this stuff. Remember, we're the first community MVP certified, first community with healthy soils plan in the state and green, we're green infrastructure plan. Okay. okay for our green infrastructure i mean everything is um i mean we've been so proactive right and we just got awarded our mvp point two point oh good so well we're not supposed to announce it yet but we're getting it that wasn't well, an announcement no, no it was just saying that we're, we're hoping that yeah. yeah. Signs uh, so, are good. No, no, the governor has to Sign, announce it. But, signs are good. But anyway, okay. so we need to have her come out so that we can discuss how do we take care of this recent issues. Um, and so, so she can be in support of us right. doing this, all this pre-work that we're doing. Well, it's it's a recent issues, but you know, of of course I gave her one of our um CCI postcards too. So mm -hmm. hope she, hopefully she did take it with her and read it. No, 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 but so, I meant yes. All, all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, yes, the damage happened in Old Deerfield, but yeah, you know that north end of the town. But it could have just have been down here in Bloody Brook, yep. and people would have been. We would have had flooded houses all over downtown mm -hmm. here if we had eight inches of rain come here. Right. So this is. I mean, it's really critical. We've been trying to work on this. I mean, this is well, great. Right. She's the climate change person, right? Yes, she's yes. the climate change so, secretary. She's the climate chief or right. climate czar, yeah. however you want. I mean, she's got pretty amazing credentials. Mm -hmm. She used to work for EPA under the Biden administration. Yeah. She's the one that went to Hampshire College. So yes. she kind of is used to, a, I mean, she's yeah. knows the area. Right. But I mean, I wanted to talk to her about, because Eversource is, is doing a, the pilot project at in Framingham for the um, uh, geothermal right. and I think they've got 37 I think 32 out of 37 are homes and the others are I don't know you know places of business mm -hmm. and so that's a pilot project so I want that here yeah, <laughs> yeah. we want we need, here. yeah we want right. that here so that's you know that's the right. kind of conversation that we want to have well that's I mean I'm available okay. um all Mondays of August okay how about you Tim how about you Trevor I should be around. Um, it just depends on the day. I mean, work days I'm always okay. out in the break here, but yeah, I'll up and I'll be here if I can. Yeah, it gets us money. If we could get her out of here the seventh. I'm I'm happy with that. It's sooner than later. You want to, you want to try the seventh? So we could start with the seventh, yeah. and we can go all the way to the twenty eighth. Okay. So August seventh. Formula-based business. That was the thing we were looking for. I'm F sorry, what? Formula-based business bylaw. 
FBB. Yes. And uh, thank you, Emily. She was the one that That's the texted one. me. Okay. And... okay, so it could be the 7th, the 14th, the 20th, what's the 21st? 21st and the 28th. Yeah, okay. Okay. 14th, 21st, 28th. So how about um, I'll work with Tim on that. Okay. Sure. Okay, cool. Crafting an email, drafting Perfect. an email together. Perfect. Okay. Is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. And then, okay, just one other uh, clarification. When she comes out here, do you want to have her come here and do like a small presentation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we can talk about that then. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think it's important that we give her the spiel. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, it, it's impressive. And we have a good track record. And we should be given money based on our track record. Well, at least she can, you know, point us in the right direction, hopefully. And give us some extra points. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. Thank sounds, you. Sounds, so okay. Sounds good. All right. I'll so be in touch. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Just while we have a couple minutes, I just okay. wanted to um, um, remind everybody about the Deerfield uh, Recreation Department summer concerts. Um, so the July 28th, uh, Rock 201 will be at Memorial Field out here at 630 to 8 p.m., um chicken wire who was supposed to play on july 14th because of the rain um will be playing august 11th and then uh we're working on cottonwood who are supposed to be here july 21st but of course the rain we're not so we're trying to reschedule them but i just want to let everybody know this this uh the 28th which is friday night 6 30 to 8 um come see rock 201 and then chicken wire will be um august 11th and uh we have all been really, I don't know if you want to take a minute to talk about the rain, <laughs> but um, we've all been really devastated in town with the um, series of heavy rain going back a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, we had flooding in the Deerfield River. We lost a lot of um, a lot of our produce, you know, talking with Antonella's farm, they lost a lot of a lot of summer squash and zucchini and just everything seems to be rotting on the vine because of the amount of rain we've right. had. Yeah. and uh flooding we lost a lot of sweet corn um but luckily our our representatives pulled through and had created a fund uh for the farmers of 20 million dollars to help um offset certainly a lot of loss that they've had in crops this year including including the freeze loss um yeah. of, of our apple and right peach. and our peaches, peaches. yeah yep. so we've had a rough year the farmers have had a really rough year especially the last month and then Friday, we all, you know, the, a, a week ago, Sunday, um, Saturday, Sunday, we got hit with a lot of rain. But this last Sunday was unprecedented amount of rain that came down and wiped out um, at least 10 of our roads, if not more. And and these we're talking 116 and 5 and 10 and uh, Pine, Pine Nook Road, Road going up to Eagle Brook Hoosick. is completely wiped out. Hoosick, Matthews Road, Stillwater, uh, Stillwater. Stillwater Road, Lower Road. Lower Road, Upper Road. Like there's so many spots, even on Lee Road, that just any little cold River Road. River Road. Um, so we really got hit very, very hard. And I can't thank Chief Paturik enough. Um, uh, uh, Kevin Scarborough, our DPW chief, he's been working all weekend long, and I really want to put a thank out to De thank you out to all of our local contractors who pitched in on a Saturday and Sunday to come in and help us they out. Worked all weekend. Yeah, worked all weekend. Davenport and um, Colcott. Colcott and Moroski. Um, Moroskis are out right now working, and I just um, they just really helped us to get these roads open. Conway was an island, and finally we got Matthews open to get to get some traffic out until they could get 116 to open. But everybody really pitched in and did an amazing job. Adam Sukolowski was kind of organizing all of this, and all of our uh, police, police officers, officers were, stepped were, up. were yeah. stepping out, watching all night long the different roads, making sure cones were out, making sure people were protected. We all spent the whole weekend doing that. And with all of the work they did on Saturday and Sunday, uh, Monday afternoon came and Touring right in the middle of a tour of, yep. of, of property damaged on Little Meadow Road to we the got, sewer plant. We got we got washed out again. We got washed so, out again with um, hail and rain, another two or three damaging inches. Damaging some of the repairs we'd already made. Yep. Uh, and we're, uh, we're, uh, we're looking at more rain tomorrow. So it's been a rough, rough week, but I just, I can't thank our, our crew enough. Um, 
all our community, everybody pulled together to make sure people were safe. You know, Ben Clark rescued somebody that washed away right in front of him in a car. Um, it's just been unbelievable. The skills that people have um, acquired all these years really paid off. And, and um, we worked really hard to save people's um, lives. And, you know, it's it's been... It, it was weekend. really thankful that no one did get hurt, really. Yeah. And, um, but again, it was really amazing. Our first responders, including the fire departments. You can't, oh, fire yeah. departments were out um, yep. as well as our highway South guys. County EMS as well made uh, yeah. uh, emergency plans with local they communities to- As the roads closed, they changed the coverage mm -hmm. um, area and who was going to cover and extra trucks were out. And worked with Greenfield to um, to cover yep. different roads that we couldn't get to. So right. uh, very great. Yeah. Yep. Excellent coordination. So it, it really was amazing. Um, and we've had the recovery part. I mean, there's more damage. I honestly can say more damage now from these storms from July 10th through um, this past weekend and Monday and maybe Thursday uh, <laughs> than Irene. Yeah. And it's exhausting. Um, Kevin and John and all three of us have been out touring with, um, you know, MEMA people, with NRCS, Natural Resource and Conservation people, any state, other state officials. And the recovery part is the part that is really, really exhausting because it's just ongoing. Yeah. And I really want to thank um, uh, Natalie Blay and uh, Joe Comerford. They were on the phone with us during emergency meetings yeah. and were reaching out uh 24 7 over the weekend to see how they could help and what and they could do so. and their staff persons have been at all these meetings that we've had with state officials and federal officials and um we truly do not have uh an estimate of cost but i um would have to say that before people freak out at the at the sheer magnitude of the losses um, we will have help and we will figure it out. Um, it's not to say that there won't be costs in the end, but it will not be borne by us. Um, all of us are working together and we've had experience over the years of working through different hazards mitigation grant programs with um, NRCS's emergency watershed protection program and just FEMA MEMA kind of programs and working with our state delegation um, Joe and Natalie, like I said, got us money just two years ago for when we had all that flooding and rain in um, July, that's similar, um, and we got extra money there so that we could cover some of the repairs, even though the, the repair magnitude, like I said, is hugely um, different. But people should not get depressed if we do not have a federal declaration because um, you need to reach $12 million, dirt roads don't count, and all the damage state. to st state roads don't count, which is like Route 2, 116, those don't count. Um, also, property damage that has insurance, that doesn't count. So there's a lot of exemptions that don't count towards that $12 million. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so people, even if we get that no de declaration doesn't mean that there's not going to be help for us so right and then we'll keep you posted the the fact that we're we have a 20 million dollar fund for farmers is an indication that we will find some similar help from the state and uh, uh to deal with this issue and i just want to thank the town staff in advance for the work that's coming your way yes. it's the uh, fallout from the flash flooding but uh, i'm sure we'll rise to the occasion so thank you and our partners in Conway, they they got hit very hard too. They have um, a lot of dirt roads up there too, so they don't get you know covered in these things as well. But they they were out right in the middle of the storm and trying to make sure that we could get through Matthews Road. Um, they had a lot of roads wipe out too. That was that was a really hard hit area. So we we just want to work together as a region to try and try and help us all out. So thank you so much. Um, Moving on. Yes, moving on. It is now um, uh, eight, uh, six, eight, six, eighteen. Um, so we will uh, reopen the 
public hearing on the dangerous dog. I will read the notice of public hearing from the town of Deerfield. In accordance to Mass General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 157, and the Town of Deerfield Bylaws, Chapter 60, Section 10, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on July 26, 2023 at 615 to determine whether a dog owned by Mary Clayton Jones of 477 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass, may be a nuisance or a dangerous dog. This hearing will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person in attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, 01373. Remote participation noted below. Dial-in number is toll-free 833-548-0276. You can meet meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Passcode is 570012. Thank you. Okay. Um, Chris, were you able to locate that letter? I was, and I just sent it along to all of you, um, as well as to council. Okay. Uh, I apologize for having missed that before. It went into the wrong folder in my email and I missed it when assembling this packet. Um, and the other thing that I missed while creating this packet was something that I know already got emailed to you all last week. And it was the information from the dog behavioral specialist that was provided by Ms. Clayton Jones's counsel. Um, so I just sent that to all of you again in an email. If you have access to that, uh, please feel free to take a look at that. And if there's anything else that you think you need, let me know. Okay. Um, well, I, I read that. Did you have a chance to read the, okay. Um, but I think it would be great if you could get it printed. I think Trevor's went to get it just so that we can reference it. Perfect. And sorry about that again. Um, so we did, did receive the additional information. Um, does anyone want to speak to that at the moment? Um, what? Good evening. Could you identify yourself, Jeremy? Sure. Jeremy Cohen. I'm counsel for Kate Clayton Jones. And <clears throat> I know that tonight's very limited in discussion to the paperwork that was submitted. What I'm not sure of is if Ms. McMahon is on or not, the author of the, I guess not. So, um, well, it was gonna be a bonus if she could be here so you could ask her questions, but um, you have the report nonetheless. Um, yeah, Trevor's getting that. And there was also a letter, additional letter sent in, um, a, a complaint. Um, I think that was, Trevor's getting that too. Did you have any questions related to that, Tim? To the letter from um, the, the Boston Dog Lawyers or the psychologist? No. Psychologist, okay. Um, no, I mean, the psychologist is not present. Is that correct? Okay. I guess not. No. Check my email in case you reached out. So um, just to recap, we agreed to hear or to take in new testimony about the the uh, the dog uh, that was provided by um, an expert in dog behavior, and uh, and we have done that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Thank you, Trevor. Welcome. Thanks, Trevor. 
sometimes what we needed the letter oh yeah oh i thought you were printing out the dog report oh i can do that sure trevor sorry <laughs> yeah, permission to speak this is kate thank oh. you joe you are here. Okay, I don't know what you look like. It's perfect. Thank you. We've been we've been trying to find you. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm an expert on the dog owner, but um, in addition to the reports that were provided by the behaviorist, oh, uh, or, or, there also ought to be a report from the um, animal control officer who came to inspect our fences. But at least, no, no. Okay. So there should be three reports, the letter, the the the, the fence, and um, all right, that's what I have. Unmute me. We did, we did all read it, Kate. Even though we're just printing it out for reference. Can you do that? It's muted. <laughs> um, this is a letter I got July 3rd. Thank you. Matt, you can. Oh, you do. Yeah. Um, thank you. Did did any of you have a question on the report? No, I'm I, I'm gonna abstain because I wasn't here for the original one, but I I didn't okay. see where it would change my decision if I were making the decision. Okay. Um, Kate, you know, we don't have the fencing report. Um, what, what, what did you want to talk about fencing? You had requested, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Yep. Um, you had requested that the animal control officer come by and inspect our fences. Yes. And I received a text from him that said that they were more than appropriate um, for his containment and that he would let you guys know. So that was the that was the first step. I believe that there were three steps, two steps in that. One was the fencing, and then one was having the um, the Theo appraised by or assessed by an animal behaviorist. So mm -hmm. I feel like we have, and and then. Um, it was about posting uh, our fences so that people were aware that there was a livestock dog on um Great. And when was this text received? Um, I don't have anything from the dog officer. Yeah, so, no, we don't. But um, do you, do you know when that was, Kate? Or do you do you know Chris Nolan? So um, just to fill you all in, I never received anything in writing from Officer Jirju, but um, I did receive a phone call from him confirming a couple days ago that um, he had inspected the fences and everything looked in order. Okay, that's what I figured. And uh, just to follow up, um, one of the conditions that could be imposed um, with the finding of dangerous dog is that fences are required to be buried two feet into the ground. So um, um, did the was the Con dog control officer explicit about what he said, or was he just making a general statement that he looked at the fences and he thought they were good? Um, as much as I recall, it was mostly the latter. Um, that That's my uh, understanding, but I can double check with him. Um, I just to the board from my notes, what officer here do was going to go make an inspection of was whether the fencing was appropriate in the period in which the matter was continued. Mm -hmm. And this review, right. I don't know that he was asked to go evaluate it for potential anticipated compliance with the terms of the policy. Got it. All right. And, and That's like, what I was hoping you could, someone could clarify. My recollection was that uh, this was just in the in the interim period while we granted this two week period. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for clarifying that. 
um, that does jog the memory. Um, I, I mean, I feel like, you know, having the bites to, to um, both our police officer, which is extremely serious, and to um, contracted staff, but a, a contracted staff that's been doing this for a couple decades almost, um, shows that, you know, having a, the adequate fencing underground is really in, important. I mean, into the ground. Um, I mean, it's a long-term problem. So I, I feel that I would be willing not to require the insurance, but um, because I know it's going to be hard to find the insurance with the, the definition of dangerous dog, but I, I feel like dangerous dog is meaning that we, it's a requirement that we do one of the conditions, one of the seven conditions, and the seventh, one of the ones that I feel is critically important is the fencing be prescribed, and the fencing does prescribe in the ground so that the dog isn't left um, by himself in the afternoon and, you know, can dig, dig and escape. That, I mean, to me, this is really huge. We, you know, Kate, the problem was you were out of the country when the first event happened, I guess. And then when the second event happened, we weren't able to get you. And um, I mean, you weren't available. And so who's to say that those conditions wouldn't exist again? And, you know, it somebody would be at risk. And again, you know, our police officer was going there for legitimate complaint. As, as testified in the letter that came in. And um, I feel like we you know we have to have the requirement of that fencing. I don't know how um, you both feel on that. Um, my thought is that um, the behavioralist's uh, letter was informative. Um, but it didn't change my opinion that two incidents of a dog biting humans uh, because the dog was was uh, perhaps not supervised by the human that they reside with. The behavioralists seem to suggest that in visiting the dog, that the dog was socialized, et cetera. But this was in the context of, uh, you with know, the owner a, a, being there, right? a, a controlled setting as opposed to walking up to the dog in uh, in situ <laughs> outside the fence um so i don't i don't have any reason to change my opinion that it's should still be considered a dangerous dog and that prescribes that we list at least one of the uh, seven criteria that uh, we have no control over saying yes or no we have to do this and and i feel that there's there's nothing that was presented to me that would change uh, my opinion that um, the 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 dog is dangerous because there's no guarantee that the owners will be there. There's no guarantee that the dog won't be outside the fence, uh, unsupervised. And apparently, that's when the dog is triggered when it's outside the fence and unsupervised. Then it acts like a protector dog, and that's happened twice now. So, uh, yeah, I don't I don't have an, any reason to change my opinion that. The dog, by definition, is dangerous. So, uh, you know, um, if I'd like to ask our, our attorney, uh, we were talking about fencing and insurance issues. Um, is it difficult for a person to get in dog insurance when they a dog has been declared dangerous, to your knowledge? I, I personally don't know, but what I can tell you is that the provision that if you order that the uh, yeah. if you enter an order that the owner obtain insurance, there's there's also a proviso in that provision of the law that indicates that the owner can also submit that they've made reasonable efforts to obtain insurance but haven't been able. To. So, you know, it's sufficient for the terms of that order if you impose it, if you enter that condition. 
that the owner either obtain insurance or submit proof of reasonable efforts to obtain insurance in the private market. And if those aren't successful, if they've made good faith efforts, that should be sufficient for that term. Well, I have an insurance background and I can say it's going to be difficult, I think. Well, so, I'm, there's a provision for, I don't see the reason to remove that as a possible okay. course of action because there is a, you know, there is a, a, a way for the owner to say, look, we've made good faith efforts and we can't. So okay. I don't find that as an objection. All right, then um, I will. May, oh, May I be heard for a moment? Sure. Thank you. Um, I just want to point out under the statute, because I, I don't think I did this last time, but the consequence, if you were to deem the dog a nuisance dog instead of a dangerous dog, under nuisance, you can order training, you can order fencing, but also nuisance or dangerous, the consequence of violating the order is the same. There's three parts of the statute that address if you violate an order, whether it's nuisance or dangerous, um, seizure of the dog, you can do jail time, the dog can be impounded and euthanized, you have to pay a fine. So we've had some cases where here, because one of the incidents may have been, I don't know that the assessor was an invited guest at the time, because one of those incidents may not have may not have qualified, and I wasn't here to argue it, and I'm not going to argue it now. My position is that I don't want to appeal this just because um, because the remedies are the right remedies, but you can put those remedies under nuisance as well. I just think that one of those incidents may not have been a, a dangerous act because the person wasn't expected to be there. And so I just want to make it clear that you can do both and your lawyer can speak to this, but um, and, and the reason for not deeming dangerous right now is because, um, well, because she has a chance to rectify this. And, and in my view, it's just really one bite to the animal control officer. Uh, that second bite, while it may have been significant, um, again, it, it, under the statute, I read it as he was a an uninvited guest at the time. Unless uh, maybe the assessor sends out an invite or a notice to say, hey, I'll be here on X date. I don't know if that happened, but my client didn't say that happened. Um, it's our assessor's um, contractor does go to properties mm -hmm. in town. And, and our residents are aware that they are viewing the conditions of the property. Okay. And I don't believe that the police officer was necessarily invited guest was responding to an incident that the dog was loose and the dog bit the police officer twice, um, causing bleeding and emergency room visit. Uh, and these are two town employees that have gone to the property in the normal exercise of their duties and come back injured and or uh, fearing you fearing that they're going to be injured uh so okay thank you for hearing me i understand your thought i do too but i i have to say um my interpretation with uh, you know with our lawyers um helping us i nuisance is a may whereas dangerous is shell and i i feel like we have to have in this situation shell have that fencing um, so, uh, Trevor felt like he wanted to abstain. So I just wasn't here for the first. Yeah, hearing, no, that's but, fine. Yep. So, um, I will make a motion to close the hearing. And I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Sounds like Daniel abstain. Um, I think what we're going to do is, um, have our lawyer write up the, finding and um we will then matt you'll get back to us for review at our next meeting i i think what would make sense would be for you to vote okay. on the conditions you want to impose yeah. and then we can create an order and issue that order okay to Ms. Clayton all right Jones. well i think there's clear indication at least on my part that i want the fencing um would it be possible for you to read the uh, the insurance requirement and the fencing requirement? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, the read, record? I'll read both of the provisions for the record so you can have them for the benefit of any motion you want to make. Um, 
under general laws, chapter 140, section 157, C2, a condition can be ordered that the dog be confined to the premises of the keeper of the dog, provided, however, that confined shall mean securely confined indoors or confined outdoors in a securely enclosed and locked pen or dog run area upon the premises of the owner or keeper, provided further that such pen or dog run shall have a secure roof, and if such enclosure has no floor secured to the sides thereof, the sides shall be embedded into the ground for not less than two feet, and provided further that within the confines of such pen or dog run, a dog house or proper shelter from the elements shall be provided to protect the dog. Um, that's the confinement or what you refer to as the, the fencing requirement. The insurance provision um, states that you may enter an order that the owner or keeper of the dog provide proof of insurance in an amount not less than $100,000, insuring the owner or keeper against any claim, loss, damage, or injury to persons, domestic animals, or property resulting from the acts, whether intentional or unintentional, of the dog, or proof that reasonable efforts were made to obtain such insurance if a policy has not been issued. Provided, however, that if a policy of insurance has been issued, the owner or keeper shall produce such policy upon request of the hearing authority or a justice of the district court, and provided further that if a policy has not been issued, the owner or keeper shall produce proof of efforts to obtain such insurance. So it's my my understanding based on the the um, the confinement um, clause that there are many remedies within this clause that do not necessarily in, involve burying the fence around the entire perimeter of the property two feet into the ground. Um, you can provide them with a secure uh, floor, et cetera. So it's flexible within, within that. So, and the insurance thing, again, I, as I said, seems to be requiring uh, the owner to make an effort to acquire this insurance and, and in the case where it's not able, well, they're, they're not able to do so proof that they've made good faith efforts to do that so do you want to make a motion carol yeah i'll make that motion uh, i'm just thinking about the insurance like i said i think it's going to be very difficult but uh, if if you're interested in keeping that, I I see no objection to uh, requiring the effort to be made. Okay, all right, then I'll support that. I will make the motion that um, we um, keep the designation as da dangerous and require the fencing um, requirement as well as the insurance requirement. Um, can you just tell me what that clause is called again? The so there are, there are two subsections of clause. section 157C. It is section 157C2 and 157C4. C4, okay. So it would be the fencing requirement of C2 and the insurance requirement of C4. Um, yes, and so I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, abstain. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so then what is your timeline on that, Matt? I, I should be able to circulate a copy tomorrow and we can get it out before the end of the week. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, and then, so even though you were staying, if you could just review it. Uh, happy to, yeah. And then get it back. Let Casey or Chris, whoever's handling it, circulating it. Okay, thank you. We'll get it to you as soon as we can. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, All right. With, uh... Matt, thank you for coming all the way out here. No problem. Happy to be here. Um, is there anything else I can assist with this evening? Um, you know what? We I did have some. Um, I don't think. Um, 
Mountain Road. Yeah, Mountain Road. That I think it's just a placeholder. We, I just want to make sure we're following the regulations on the condemnation of of twenty six Mountain Road. Last meeting, they were they were um, working with the Sun to clean up the space, and everything seemed to be working right. I haven't heard anything to the contrary since. Right. So, so have you heard anything, Chris, on uh, from? Valerie. So, so uh, Valerie, unfortunately, was not able to be here tonight, but um, her update regarding both Mountain Road and Hawks Road is that there's essentially no news to report. Um, the cleanup effort's still ongoing at Mountain Road, um, and she didn't think there were any major concerns there. Um, and Hawks Road, there's been no indicator of any violations. So um, all, all good. Okay, so just keep a placeholder yeah. there. Thank you, sure. Chris. Thank you. I guess sure. not. I'll talk anything. to Chris and then track if there's anything that needs to yeah. be taken care of ongoing. Thank you. Perfect. Really appreciate Perfect. it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And Have a good night. Chris, and just one last thing in, in relation to um, the dog hearing, I, I understand that we received some email um, from neighbors, but um, we reopened the hearing in very narrow confines. So we were only able to take in information about um, the uh, evaluation of the dog. So we were not able to honor the request in that email to read into the record. Right. Uh, so if you get a call from the people, please just explain to them that legally we're not allowed to do that, um, but that we have um, the email in, in the town's records. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Thank you for adding that. I, I would also note that under the dog hearing statute, you need to take testimony under oath. And that is a letter that is an unsworn assertion right. so that you can take notice of the fact that it was yeah. mailed to you, but it's not testimony under oath or an affidavit. Thank you. Yep. That no, sense. that's fine. Thanks for that clarification. Yes. Um, under Board of Health um, announcements, I just want to put out that we have scheduled a senior flu clinic um, for September 15th. This will be down at the um, Holy Name fam Family Holy Name Church. Um, and that will be nine to 12. That's September 21st. September 15th. Oh, 15th. That's and then, Friday. yep. And then we have, have, um, um, at the elementary school open to everyone, October 13th and October 20th at the elementary school. And that will be three o'clock to six o'clock. One sec. Um, that's uh, Holy Family is yeah. the first one. Holy Family is the first one, September 15th, 9 to 12, 9 a.m. to 12, the same senior. For the senior one, right? Seniors, yeah. and we'll have high-dose senior um, uh, um, shots. Uh, and October 13th and October 20th, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., at the elementary school. There'll be pre-registration for all three clinics. Um, and we're hopeful to have the COVID booster, the new bivariant, bivalent um, COVID booster that's out, but we don't have that guarantee yet. So we'll keep everybody posted. Um, Chris, if you could keep this on uh, the, um, under the, Board of Health that will remind me to update it, but it should say Senior Flu Clinic September fifteenth, and then um, Flu Clinic October thirteenth and twentieth for everybody. Perfect. And the reason why the seniors clinic is separate than the other ones is because we will have the majority of our shots are high dose, whereas when we have the clinic on the thirteenth and the twentieth. We'll only have a few high dose. And some low dose for the kids. And we'll have low dose for kids. This is kids and family, yep. you know, okay. adult, regular adult version. High dose is for anyone over, um, I believe it's 65. I'll have to look at the yeah. uh, requirements again. Okay. Minutes this week? I didn't, I didn't see any minutes see either. Anything, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, I had no minutes this week, or I don't know if I missed them during the week sometime or. There were no minutes. Okay, great. Yep, just want to make sure. Um, we want to um, just talk about the Human Rights Committee status um, because I just don't want to, again, I don't want to forget that. Um, 
so we're what we were going to talk about was just you know where are we at we have a couple we have a couple people right chris so yeah if i may just provide a quick update i had a good conversation with casey about this this afternoon um because she kind of filled me in on a couple of things that had kind of gone on the back burner a little bit um but back in april uh when the ad hoc human rights committee made their presentation to the select board uh, they proposed three different possibilities um, of different kind of committee concepts um, the first was called the no place for hate community it was modeled after a town committee in the town of hull um, the second was a deerfield advisory committee on human rights and the third is the deerfield human rights committee um, each of these have a unique mission statement um, and I think where we left off, um, so we were obviously in the middle of town meeting season, and since then it's been incredibly busy, so revisiting this now, I think what the ad hoc committee was hoping for was for the select board to kind of focus in on one of these concepts, um, and I think, unfortunately, Casey and I just had this conversation this afternoon, so I wasn't able to send you this handout, but it was the same one that the ad hoc human rights committee had sent when they gave their presentation. Um, I'd be happy to include it again at your next meeting if you'd like to take it up then, but um, in the meantime, if anybody has any particularly strong feelings about that, um, as soon as maybe one concept is kind of chosen as the main one to go by, um, the select board could approve that, we could run it by council, make sure it's consistent with our bylaws and with general law, and after that point we could begin the process of appointing people. Okay. My feelings on this just are uh, are just um, it's always about capacity, and I I don't want to. Um, my fear is we go forward with a full fledged human rights committee, and we have no money or staff or time to, and it feels like we fall on our face. So I I so it all depends on how much effort the members can bring towards it and how we can integrate that with our policies in town uh, and town staff to be able to manage it. So um, I'm always for walking before running. And so kind of progression up the scale sounds good or the Deerfield Advisory Committee, like advising us. And when we do um, hiring, how do we, you know, how do we do this stuff? I'm just wondering how we with our limited capacity, how do we find a good model that serves the purpose of the people investing their time and makes a difference in the community without feeling like, oh, we just didn't really tackle this. Um, you know what I mean? I'm just, it's, it's a capacity well, my, uh, my, issue. Um, fortunately, I think our community is a lovely community and um, the couple issues that we had, you know, full blood issue problems was um, handled not probably in the best way in the sense that there was not a system or a process. So my, my real desire is for us to be proactive in the sense that we set up procedures should something happen again. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm optimistic because um, based on knowledge of some of the events, after we heard about them afterwards. And then subsequently, um, I think- Situations change. Situations change, people moved out of town. So it's probably likely that the same thing is not gonna happen. So I, I wanna make sure that we have some kind of proactivity built in. So, I mean, it could be as simple as looking at the calendar and making sure we don't have a meeting night on mm -hmm. Yom Kippur or yeah. Hanukkah or whatever. I mean, we just be sensitive, but open and sensitive to, to people, other people's um, faith mm -hmm. and and um, different diversity issues and and that kind of thing. You know, so I I, I feel like we as a select board could say. This is what we're charging you for. Help us every time that we are evaluating something, help us with evaluating it from a diversity and um, inclusiveness. And then, so we have to set that process up. 
And I'm wondering how do we handle the, um, I'm a little more pessimistic because it's 2024 is an election year. And it's going to get yeah. ugly. It just does. And um, how do we, That's you know, true. maybe how do we have like some, you know, gatherings where we can talk about that stuff so people understand kind of are wide eyed well, about again, what's, what's but that's coming. a proactive thing. Yeah, exactly. How do we have civil discussion? Your thoughts, I'm I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. I think we basically have agreed at the le a previous meeting that we're going to set up a committee, whether we call it the Human Rights Committee or the Human Rights Advisory Committee. Yeah. And we talked about the fact that we have four volunteers who were not involved in this process at right. all. Yeah. Um, who've stepped forward and saying they're willing to serve on this committee. And rather than us trying to determine this, every meeting we come to, we say the same things. <laughs> I think we should appoint those four people to help them finish up, whether we call it the Human Rights Committee or the Human Rights Advisory Committee, and, um, and come to us and say, these are the things that we think we can do for the community that, that are going to address, you know, um, work with the personnel committee, work, and I think human rights should be what it's called rather than diversity, equity, inclusion, that's right. become a hot button issue. You can't even say words anymore without somebody attacking the words because their faith in their particular political persuasion is one way. And if you say something that offends that, then you, so everybody right. should be in, a, in agreement that human rights are, they're human. they're human rights, they're discussed in all of our uh, country's documents, and we all have a vested interest in to make and respecting them. So uh, well, so then stop. I'm with you then. So let's let's name the committee. Do we have the names? Human Rights Committee, Advisory Committee, because I've right. come to advise. Right, and then but basically they're going to work. They're not going to have any legislative power. They're, they're right. not going to have any authority. Okay, there. so the Human Rights Advisory Committee. Yeah, is the name we're in. I love we're it. Right? Okay, I make a motion that we um, create the Human Rights Advisory Committee. Second. Okay. I'll, yeah, both of us will second it. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Second. So. Do we have names? Do we have names? Chris, do you have those names? I do have some names. Um, unfortunately, none of those people have reached out to us directly. They've reached out to Deborah Yaffe, who was the chair of the ad hoc committee. So okay. I probably would wish to get in touch with them directly to make sure they're still interested um, before they're appointed. Okay, okay. That's so, fair enough. So what we want you to do for our next meeting is put a, a, an item on the agenda of a Human Rights Advisory Committee appointments. Sure. And verify that we have uh, four people or four one. people, two people, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and then, as Tim said, we are agreeing, right, that they will, will finish up the work of the original committee right. and come back to us with the mission statement, with some procedure um, options or mm -hmm. some thoughts on how they could be helpful to the town. Sure. Yeah, and, and one of the first things, uh, so you'll you'll reach out and say, we, you know, please send us a letter expression of interest in serving on this committee, mm -hmm. et cetera. And basically, um, they're going to help us get this over the finish line because yep. we don't have the manpower with all the things we're dealing with to try and um, wrestle this thing to the ground. Uh, sure. Great. And one other point I wanted to follow up on on that topic um, was at the last meeting where the board discussed this, um, you had expressed interest in having the personnel board assist in some aspects of establishing the Human Rights Committee. Um, Casey had a chance to broach that with them at their previous meeting last month, um, and they were definitely interested. Um, and they are having another meeting next month, I believe the 14th, but that's not set in stone yet. Um, and that should be on their agenda. So um, if the board has anything that they would like them to specifically take up during that discussion, I can definitely communicate that. That's great. They can, if they perfect. can help any way they can with the people who get appointed. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. And one of the things that obviously this all feeds into is that we've had a discussion in the past about setting up a, a sort of an easy and understandable process for people who are interested in serving on volunteer boards so there is an actual procedure and so maybe personnel and the human rights advisory committee working together could help mm. us 
do that sort of what are, what are the forms we're going to do yeah know, and this is uh, the citizen interest form yeah that we have on the agenda down yeah. here yep placeholder yeah sure i know i i had drafted one of those a little while ago um i think it also got a little bit lost in the shuffle of you know floods and town meeting and all that um so i'd be happy to bring that back um for you by all of those boards and committees um and figure out how we can best tweak it completely rehaul it i'm i'm very open i'm i'm sure that whatever you've developed so far would be appreciated by either of those committees and yep. uh, as a framework and i'm sure it's in good shape based on uh, everything you've done for us so far um yes thank you chris thank you the next item on the agenda is usda agricultural um Department of Agriculture's Emergency Watershed Protection Program, EWP. We keep referring to EWP. Is there, um, I think we're gonna use EWP um, on Pine Nick Road as a phase in. I don't know if you were gonna do a presentation, Chris, but um, it, it um, protects infrastructure. And so um, if, the current thinking is if we apply for a book grant, that is through a MEMA hazardous mitigation, and that would do a remake of whole of Pine Nook. The problem with that is that it opens up um, September 1st and closes in December. They take several months to review the applications because the applications are pretty extensive um, and, and it's competitive. We have uh, tour, the MEMA people have toured it and said we would have a good application. So actual shovel in the ground would be two to three years. We cannot leave Pine Nook Road two to three years. So the idea is to fix the road as best we can through this restoration EPA, e, EWP program that would armor some of the our protection on our the roadside as it goes up, but it would not be it would not be enough it's of a rebuild. Have, it feels like it's supplemental to like we really need to get that design with new sewer water line. Right, but that would be the brick grant. Right, and we got it. And so this would integrate work. We need to we need to get on our legislatures and the and the and federal and say we need a relief bill like between us and Greenfield and Conway. This was well, a disaster. Ash, yeah, but Ashfield and um, yes. Williamsburg were were hit, we're hit part hit, two, two so in in the July tax that months, whole July twenty yeah. first you know twenty twenty one where we got some money for the areas. We need some money to hold us up. We have to pay for the work that we've done. We only have a year to pay for that. And we we've got to get it like, I know. Uh, you know, you we got to pay that back. So we have to have to plan to pay all the money we spent this weekend and then got washed out and then that we spend spending this week to get going. Um, we need a plan to have that paid by June thirtieth of next year. So then, um, but we need to get Richie Neal. We need McGovern. Elizabeth Warren, we need them all to recognize the yeah. disaster that we've had. And I think Eagle Brook has some, you know, political work they're doing. We need to do ours. We need to get some help for a grant to get that work done. There's no way we can do it ourselves. It's probably 10 to $15 million up and down that road. I think it's closer to 15, but, yeah. but that's, that would include new sewer, yes. new water, and new gas lines, um, communication lines, communication lines, right. Put and it, the power lines underground. Yep, um, all that. So that that is a brick grant kind of thing. But the reality of it is, it's three years away. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just being. No, realistic. I agree with that. Okay, but so is, is but, there money before the a brick grant? Like, well, that's what relief the, from maybe, but. And if there is, then we can just pay cash, right. okay? But if there isn't the EWP, we can start the process. I signed the paperwork requesting assistance. Mm -hmm. So that starts the process. I did it today. So what will happen is we can bring in a Darren Davis, the state engineer, and he can start looking at that and see, and we can integrate it into an overall plan. 
In other words, the water is going to keep coming. It is. And so we need like big enough rock that it's going to slow the velocity of the water, but also um, keep you it know, in its channel. Keep right. Keep it in its channel. It, slow right. it down all right. the way, every 50 will, feet or something. What they, if you use really big stone, you know, big rocks, yeah. it, will, it will be a riffle effect right. and it will slow it down. The problem is it gets to a bottleneck. And this is why an overall engineering redesign will happen is because it gets to the bottleneck at the railroad overpass. That little thing gets plugged up. It gets plugged up every single time. We got it. We got to make too much that water. larger. So the whole you have to have a design, a filtration device that will collect the silt, will collect the debris, and and will you know be able to have storage capacity so that you don't back up that wow. and wash out that whole culvert. And being up there so much in a more today, just watching Morosky dig the silt out of the bottom just to, and the pumps you know, that we have like running just to get feet. its feet of silt. Cool. And then, you know, Saturday I walked, I was through there and Sunday watching our guys clean Wapping Road. And then coming Monday, it looked like nothing had happened at all. It's completely full again. Was And it's, if you look at it now, it's a gray water. It's all silt just coming down coming down coming down off of that mountain in multiple spots i i just want to say one positive thing i i uh, when i was up at pine pine nook road on one of their tour mm -hmm. yesterday um coming down the hill was a railroad guy because they're yeah they're working culvert, on it right, right they're culvert plugged so i flagged them down literally yep. stood in the road and said Hello. <laughs> Guess what? I need your contact information. We yeah. went. He we couldn't find it on the Google, you know, using. Yeah. Google. So we went up to Steam Mill where that ravine, all that filtration comes down. He he did his GPS points. We figured out the culvert that it was always blocked, and he is going to clean it out on a regular basis. It's on the radar again. So that the is help. a huge relief to me because I've, you know, if the pre if it gets blocked, the pressure builds up. That's a tremendous risk. It is. And so, all the way down Pleasant is a, is a mess as well. Right. So there are some things happening that are positive. Right. I mean, I think basically we just have to let the ED, EWP process run because um, any work that they do is going to improve the situation when we come to the final, mm -hmm. uh, final repairs of the road. And uh, we need to get it to the point where the water is controlled enough that it doesn't tear up the asphalt again. Because at some point in between now and when a brick grant can mm -hmm. be put in place and the work begun on on that ultimate solution, that road's going to have to be paved again. Um, and I know. you know somebody's going to have to pay for it, and we're going to need the assistance of you know. Um, the nonprofit to to make sure that their infrastructure in the long term we're going to be the best partner they can have because we're going to be accessing federal money that none of us could get uh, that they couldn't get on their own mm -hmm. um but we're going to need their help too and uh, i'm sure they know that um we'll talk to eric today about it and um you know so uh but we we need to Weather weather of cooperation is very much needed. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't control that. No. But to get to the point where we can, um, what happened was that there was no hot top over the work that we'd done. So when the rain came, it just washed it out again. Yep. And uh, you know, so well, it was so intense. Right. We, we just need to, you know, hopefully EWP can move forward quickly. They can armor the the stream bed. Um, you know, they can't. They can't do it on the opposite side because there's no infrastructure on the Eagle Brook side that's threatened. Right. They can do it on the road side, but that's going to make a major difference in a storm like this again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I think there's also some land over near the sewer plant where they're looking at yes. armoring banks. Exactly. Yeah. And um, to our credit, you know, we've had communities around us that are, are dumping raw sewage into the Connecticut and the mm -hmm. Green River. And oh, um, that's another positive thing. And yes. um, we didn't do that, even though a million gallons of water flowed through the old Deerfield plant. And, uh, you know, it, it operated. I would like to say just 
flows at the old Deerfield plant were 460,000 gallons, mm -hmm. then 440,000 gallons and like 380, just in three days. Right. So that reinforces our opinion that that plant needs to stick to the permitted you know, Absolutely. gallons per day of 250,000 because we've exceeded it three times in a in space of a week and a half. Yes. And there's no way that you have enough retention for that amount of flow at that plant. The, those two aeration tanks would be full in 15 hours, uh, right. 20 hours. And uh, there's just not enough retention with an MDR program. I know off subject, but I'm convinced. No, but that was a good, week. that was a good discussion well, and we've had yeah. 1.6 going through the old deerfield i mean I the mean, south deerfield plant and right. uh you know we have some work to do there because there was so much volume coming through it kicked off the the new clarifier so that's back up and and running um they're working on the alarms to get that set it, it all happened right during the transition to the new aeration tanks and the new clarifier so that they could take down the old ones and work on those we're going to have to take down the uh, we're going to have to restart the old clarifier we're going to bring the new clarifier back offline for a short amount of time and adjust the weirs because some of the weirs um the weirs are all the sawtooths going around right and it lets the water out evenly well it's like not enough coming out one little section. So they've got to reset the weirs to do that. They've got to drain that down a little bit. They did drain um, the large aeration tank we've been using for years. We thought we would suck all that out with um, vac trucks and run it through the headworks to clean everything out. But they got it all the way down to the bottom and realized there was three foot of silt in the bottom of that thing. We weren't sure we what was in there. It's been... Mm -hmm. 20 or 30 years since it's been empty. So all of that grit and sand, because we've had no grit removal system um, and we've had no head work. So all of that stuff has been in the aeration tank. So that's all getting cleaned out and trucked away. Um, and then they're going to start dividing that up. But the other two, air, the other half of the aeration tank is up and running. The two aerations are running. Um, we've had a lot of flooding around that. We're working on some of the flooding that's coming down and around the plant right. to address that. Um, so a lot going on at that plant during all this flooding too. But during all this time, we're putting out excellent effluent. So right, and it's 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 a classic example of we know, you know, change and climate change is here, uh, and um, there's there's absolutely no we would be totally remiss in allowing a, a reduction in permitted mm -hmm. or even um, building a plant that even if we kept the permit couldn't process they what could. we are allowed to process on a daily basis. So um, I hope this just puts to bed this discussion that we've been struggling with for year and a half or two years that we should somehow do something different. An MBR just cannot once it once it passes that capacity, that's it. It can't it can't process anymore. There is no retention time in an MBR. Right. It's just getting the fil it's filtering, yeah. and there's no way to filter that amount of volume. Well, I'm you know I'm and I'm sure that once we get a Western Samson contract put mm -hmm. together, that we'll find these things out. Um, yeah, but uh, it won't be just us. Saying yeah, uh, you know, but. Ultimately, I'm just speaking about the the 25, 20, yes. 250,000 GPD um, one permit. Five. Yeah, I mean that's just yeah. yeah. That question should be totally blown out of the water at this point, you know, so to speak. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, well, obviously, there's going to be more discussion on the EWP. Yes, there is. <laughs> okay. Well, we need we need and we can't answer it right now because we actually don't know all what, the, all the and we need all the help we can from our legislatures federally and state yeah. um to, to get uh get a fund together to help us with right. this. Right. Well, the so EWP can... program, the advantage of the EWP is we can start immediately. It's mm -hmm. emergency. So it's treated as emergency. It has to be done. The project can't go beyond 220 days so you can start immediately so um obviously we're going to be talking about this yeah, for the next probably few weeks <laughs> um 
Uh, next on the item uh, on the agenda is the review and approval of the resolution on rural schools. Um, I, I uh, testify, well, I didn't testify, I spoke at, at the, I wasn't on the panel, um, at the briefing that Natalie and Joe had on H, uh, House Bill 3567 and Senate Bill 2388. And it's basically more aid for rural schools. We're chronically underfunded, declining enrollment. Um, but this bill also has special ed costs rolled in, which have been so excessive over the years as a budget. You know, it's squeezing the the, the special needs or the special ed budget is is nearly as much as the regular ed budget. Yeah. And so we really need relief on that statewide. So this these bills address that to a certain extent. Um, we already voted to support. I already asked and we did vote this. But um, Chris, I had Chris check. We didn't actually send this in. So um, I just want to make sure we could re-vote it if you all yeah, let's if do it it. want to, um, or we could just sign it. But I and thought we put it on here. We could just re-vote it. I make a motion to approve the resolution in support of rural schools bill. And I'll second that motion. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G.I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Um, then the other thing is, um, Chris went, not only did he check that we didn't send this in officially, but our names um, aren't on there as in as individuals supporting. So I just want to make sure that um, yeah. you all uh, yeah. um, wouldn't mind if Chris goes in and actually sure. adds our name to the support yep. letter. Is that okay? All yes. right. Do you want yes. to vote on that? Or Chris, no. do you feel comfortable no. about that? Yeah, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda is review and approval of the resolution to name 59 North Main Street, the Leary Municipal Parking Lot. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution to name the town owned parcel of 59 Main, North Main Street, the Leary Municipal Parking Lot. Uh, second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, Chris, do you just want to, well, I guess I could just read it. It's, um, uh, this was originally from the estate of Edith Leary. That's where the name mm -hmm. got, came from, in case anyone wanted to know. Um, reposting of the emergency select board meetings. Chris, do you want to address this? We just have to make sure that they're legal. Sure. So, um, yeah, I talked about this with Casey, who had a conversation with uh, counsel on this uh, with Attorney Mead. And uh, I asked if we needed to create specific agendas that we could go back and post and uh, we don't um, that's not necessary at this time is what I was told so if the board could make a motion um, to essentially uh, confirm that these meetings happened with the information listed on the agenda um, that should essentially cover. Um, I would make a motion that we. Um repost these meetings that mm -hmm. um for July 21st 2023 at 6 p.m. and um July 22nd at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. um and I I think we should probably add Monday's meeting right Tim yeah I wasn't not yeah. around for Monday Mo Monday's meeting was um um 11 11 p.m. I mean, 11 a.m. 11 a.m.? Yep. I was the only one on the 20... That was the 24th, Chris. I was the only one on the 25th, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we'll to post that. so it was just okay. Monday 24th. All right. I will make that correction. So just to add that, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um... Nature Conservancy Wildlife thing. Did we have an actual letter to sign, Chris? Yeah. So that was actually something that I put on the agenda. Um, it was something that I got a total of less than 48 hours before the person's deadline, um, who was looking for any support that she could get from municipal officials and not having a select board meeting. I, I just signed a letter myself, um, which doesn't carry as much weight as one signed by the entire select board, but um, I 
went forward and did that. So that's just an acknowledgement that that happened um, and it doesn't actually require any action by the board at this time. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Sure. Um, placeholder for the Leary lot. Update. So an update everybody on what's going on with the Leary lot. Um, thank you all for being at the uh, meeting last week. Wow, that was only a week ago. Um, so <laughs> um, that was uh, another great public information session. We had some great feedback and comments. Um, and Jeff is busy at work with his team uh, trying to finalize some of the concepts that had been discussed um, regarding especially green space and maybe limiting the number of parking spaces to be four or five under what had been in the lowest parking capacity drawing. Um, the next step on site is going to be some soil pit testing that we're currently in the process of arranging and setting a date for. Um, and once that happens, then the ground is essentially cleared for construction to begin after the design process and the bidding process are finalized. Um, so that's moving along very nicely. Um, in regard to the EV charging portion of the project, uh, I believe Casey forwarded you all a contract that we received from Rivermore Energy for them to continue their operations with us. Um, we, Casey and I had a couple of questions that we wanted to get answered by John, um, and we're going to ask if he's available to come speak at the next select board meeting, if that's okay with you all, um, because it sounds like you all yeah, might potentially would, have some uh, questions too. I just want some clarification because it um, wasn't, you know, anything we anticipated as part of the budget. This has become so much more complicated. I'm not saying it's not worth having, um, you know, hired consultant, but uh, I certainly want a clarification on the, you know, what what we're going to need going forward, I guess, for that amount of money. Um, I also just want to um, mention that the next Leary lot uh, meeting is August 21st at 6 p.m. And that what we're going to do is be reviewing the final um, draft of the input of the last two meetings. And um, just to augment that, I did contact uh, the Chief Pachark of the Police Department to ask him about uh, the uh, traffic pattern that was, uh, yeah. and I okay, asked him, he well, he didn't say anything because of the flooding and everything that he's been dealing with, but God, yeah. I did spell out that there were questions about having a, um, an entrance and egress on Elm Street, and then there was some expression from, I think, uh, Gary Bugroff of Berkshire Brewing that he thought it should be entering and exiting from North Main Street, but um, I think the feeling, the initial feeling of the chief is that you don't want traffic going out of North, out onto North Main Street. It's exactly. possible to have traffic going in North Main Street, but exiting and entering on Elm Street. But he wanted to think about it. Yeah. So hopefully we'll have some input before the next, uh, the August 21st meeting, because right. uh, that's a critical element of this thing. Yeah. And I mentioned also the possibility of just blocking off North Main Street entirely to entrance uh, and egress. But it doesn't make any sense no. in my estimation to have people going out into that no. intersection because then you've got the park street um, yeah. you know cut off you've got i, I was just going to say i think we're traffic going, going both ways the, I like the, the entrance off a of main off a of main is it, i i really would encourage yeah. um and i would love to talk with um Hamshaw to figure out what they're thinking of you know where their building would be in their park cuz i thought they wanted to have some like parking on that spot so entrance and park right there might be beneficial to everybody too so yeah be curious to see he, how he all was that um, out. he was asked to reach out to both um, yeah. berkshire brew and yeah, have yeah, yeah, sure the their plans were yeah um, that'd be great think with our plan that'd be great okay yeah, um, and i'm hoping to sit down in a meeting with all three of them as well with berkshire design berkshire brewing and hamshaw and Kind of figure out how we can get our designs to all be congruent with each other. Perfect. Perfect. Um, next item on the agenda is um, uh, Annalie Wolfke would, yeah. would be reappointed as she's willing to volunteer again as our designee to the Franklin Regional Planning Board. 
to make a motion to appoint Annalee Wolfcool to the reappointment for the Franklin Regional Planning Board. A second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And thank you, Annalee. That's yes. wicked nice. Uh, it's important to have a uh, involved person. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why is because uh, any regional kind of um, projects that would affect Deerfield, um, if we have an appointee there, they will have input. Yep. Um, placeholder on employment policies, citizen interest forms, job descriptions, related documents, review and approval. Um, what's the status on the um, EMS job description? Do we get that posted, Chris? Um, that we had a couple of follow up questions for Labor Council with. And as soon as we get those answered, which I believe Casey set up a meeting with her for tomorrow at 1230, um, we should be able to get that posted tomorrow afternoon. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, and then regarding the um, authorization, sorry, I didn't mean to steal and move on to another item. Did you have any other questions on the on the EMS chief job description? So it's been posted? No. It will be as of tomorrow. Okay. After, after our meeting with Labor Council. Um, okay, with Kate Petteroff? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I did speak with Casey earlier about that, and um, I was encouraging. She was talking about the personnel department and waiting until August 14th, and, um, you know, I just. We can't. Yeah, we won't. Yeah. Yeah, we won't have a finalized version until it's been approved by the personnel board, but that won't stop us from posting a draft, which we've done as a past practice for other job descriptions and can still draw interested candidates. Yep, excellent. Um, that, I think that was what um, um, you were going to talk about the uh, temporary part time help for the town accountant. Yes, so um, I believe I included as one of the last things, if not the last thing in your packet. Um, there was a request from our town accountant, Brenda Hill, um, to hire some temporary part-time help. Uh, and that temporary part-time help would come in the form of the recently retired uh, Police Department Administrative Assistant, Deborah Austin. Um, Brenda has been in touch with Deborah about coming in to help for a couple of hours a week. Um, and that would just need approval since Deb is already on the town's payroll. Um, it would need approval from the select board for a couple of things. Um, it would need your approval for a change of her employment conditions to temporary uh, part-time assistant in the, in the town accountant's office. Um, and it would involve uh, your approval of hiring her for that above step one. And um, that's essentially all that would need to be approved right now, I believe. I'm not exactly sure of the rate that Brenda had said. Unfortunately, I can find that information for you and send it over right away um, tomorrow. But um, those were the two conditions that Brenda. She recommended thirty dollars and thirty nine cents an hour. Yep. Perfect. So yes, that's that would be the amount. Yep. Um, I would therefore make a motion to appoint Deborah Austin for the temporary hire at thirty dollars and thirty nine cents an hour for five to seven hours a week to help Brenda out. No second a, that motion. As a temporary part-time administrative mm -hmm. assistant. A second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? No. I mean, I feel, feel like we're so lucky to get. Yeah, Deborah very good to have that help. Oh my God. That'll help Brenda. All, right. on. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, was, Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank I you, was, Debbie. I was talking with Brenda a bit uh, about this and some other stuff, and I know she's um, she'll be going away. For a couple of weeks so this is going to be helpful um for, she has a wedding to go to and she's got vacation she's going to apply for uh do our free cash before she leaves i think she wants to um get our free cash certified around the 16th of august so that oh, we could turn that yeah. in and they would have a week or so to ask questions and then so she's still here before that she's hoping maybe by the end of august she'd have free cash sort of gosh that would be unbelievable It'd be amazing so that's her goal before she goes away on vacation um and her wedding so uh, okay just wanted to give you an update on that okay um did you have any more information on the town clerk position chris so all i have for you tonight is the um news that there will be a memo um, at the next select board meeting regarding the uh, some reshuffling that has been discussed with 
uh, people in that office about how we're going to be delegating certain positions. So um, just to make you all aware, that's going to be coming up the pipeline pretty soon. Okay. okay. Now, is that um, going to result in any changes in the number of hours that the, are going to be paid time in that office? I mean, is it going to increase the number no. of people, hours? I so overall, it should um, not have any significant impact on budget or hours. Um, it might involve the shifting of hours from one position to another, but um, that is definitely all going to be explained in the memo. Um, yeah. I, I think that's all I have at this time for that. All right. Um, do you, we didn't have any mail? There was no mail this week. Wow, wild. Okay. It floated away. I know. <laughs> I did want to circle back because, um, as sometimes happens in the select board and board of health discussion items, um, I wanted to ask uh, two things. Well, first, I wanted to say that the library project uh, building committee is moving ahead quite effectively. Great. We're at the oh, point Tim, of that's um, basically a, a really lovely basic design has been approved, and we were starting to talk about um, uh, finishes like carpet types, uh, you know, uh, colors of wood in the adult sections and and then and teen and uh, children sections. Um, and the architect has uh, done a great job. And um, there are solar panels along the new, you know, uh, it's part of the whole plan now. So um, thank you. I had one question. Have they um... One of my biggest concerns was the way the design was. They had two roofs coming to a middle uh, where it was just going to dump a lot of water and snow right in the center. And I, didn't know, I know they were working on maybe a solution there. Do you know what? They oh, yeah. Found? No, there, there, is a, um, there are systems that where, where water sheds to go into drains. And also, that's not a flat roof. It, all the roofs that you might think are flat or sloped. Yeah. And, um, you know, there will be, of course, when snow falls, That's it falls. My, yeah. Right. Um, my concern was that the water was coming to that flat area and what they were going to try and do an, a, a drain right through the building or like through the roof into the building. And I can just figure like as often as we go up and maintain that kind of thing. I just was worried about that design specifically mm -hmm. if they could... Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I haven't specific. I, I know right. we've discussed it, and and okay. there there was not a huge um, sense of concern about it. There's flat roofs, and uh, yeah. you know, that's yeah. As long as they uh, have some good drainage, and yeah, it can get off of there. As yeah, well. and in like several places. Yeah, in several places too. Yeah, yeah. and okay. um, the other thing I wanted to raise is impossibility. The storms may have affected the the timing on when North Main Street. I, I haven't talked to Kevin Scarborough about this, mm -hmm. but the reality is the money that would be allocated to North North Main Street sidewalks might need to be reallocated to some other expense mm -hmm. as a way to help us pay for these unanticipated. So that's just something I We'd wanted have, to. Yeah, and that would have to be voted at town meeting. Because we uh, appointed it, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean, we would have to re reassess that. Let's not do anything serious yet until yeah. we have yeah. more information. That makes oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm yeah. just, you know, pointing exactly. out. Exactly. No, that's a good You good know, point. the question is, you don't start the project unless you know you can finish. Right. Yeah. The crosswalk part is part of a grant. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. different. I mean, that's yep. just. Yeah. I know. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. Tim, I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing that back up. That's a good report. Yep. Very good. Um, you know, this seems like so long ago, but we had a really nice native plant. That was uh, great. Program was really and, great. and Trevor did a really nice job. Uh, well, you connected over with the technology, our technical. We set it up. Quiz here. And, and we, we, we gave out plants and. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. It, it really made me change my thinking about how you plant things and why why you plant certain things and why you want I just this point alone that a that a family of birds needs five to six thousand caterpillars in a six week time period for their and they're you know and then when they don't have them they're feeding them rocks and seeds and they, you know they can't 
digest baby birds can't digest that stuff they need that soft nutrients that are in cat sounds kind of sickening but in in caterpillars to and and there is That's such a massive this. decline in caterpillars bees birds like and these are the things that pollinate our world so we can eat so there's mm -hmm. a massive problem going on there's a great netflix show from david attleborough yep. and his 93 years of being around the earth and just looking at the amazon getting cut down for palm oil palm oil trees is heartbreaking mm -hmm. and just this this world has to get a grip on what they're doing it's it's just we're just destroying the the lungs of the planet that help cool us off when it's 114 and over 110 for 19 days in a row in phoenix and their burn center has got a massive amount of burn victims going to the hospital because they trip and fall on the asphalt and they just touch the asphalt which gets to 170 degrees mm -hmm. we've got a problem people we're getting too much rain they're getting too much heat it, it's it's a mess right now we've got to look at ways to fix it and we're doing our part these little native plants they don't sound like much but as she said it makes it it's one thing that she can do to make a difference and it, 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 when you think about every little chickadee family yeah. needing five or 6,000 caterpillars, it's just like, oh my gosh, where are they getting them? No wonder there's no little chickadees running around yeah. anymore. I mean, there is a definite decline in chickadee. I mean, I used to have a ton of them. Mm -hmm. Now I only got like two or three yeah. families. Yeah. You know? So anyway, so we're moving on. Debbie, we are um, trying to do everything we can. <laughs> So where are we on this list? We're on the town administrator report. Yeah, Chris, can you review done. the town administrator report for Very us? Very nice report. By and the way. then we're... Sure. Thank you. Um, so let me just pull it up real quick. I know I sent it earlier today. There it is. Okay, so just going through item by item. Um, Obviously, as we all know, uh, the ongoing flood damage recovery efforts from the torrential rain that we received on three different days, um, from, what I've, from what I'm told, we had three 500-year floods in the course of 14 days, which, again, um, this shouldn't be considered normal, but it's starting to become that way. Um, they've dominated the work hours of a large portion of our town staff for the past two weeks, and I know this was expressed by the board earlier, but I, I wanted to echo the sentiment that we can't thank those who have been involved enough. Uh, it's been an absolutely massive effort to make sure that the town is safe, that the community is reachable in the case of a disaster and keeping all of our streets, all of our roads accessible to emergency vehicles has not been an easy task. Um, so huge thank you to our Highway Department, to our Department of Public Works in general, to the Police Department, contractors, the districts, thank you to everybody. Um, regarding procurement, an emergency waiver request for bidding advertisement requirements was submitted to the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance on July 21st. Yesterday, we received notification that was approved. Um, I submitted that one right before we got the third bout of rain that uh, brought our number of damaged sites from about 21 to upwards of 60. So there's going to be another one that needs to be submitted that I was hoping to submit today, but um, unfortunately wasn't able to get finalized, but that will be immediately on my radar for tomorrow morning. Um, the uh, USDA's Emergency Watershed Protection Program that we already discussed, um, that was also submitted, the request for assistance through that program was submitted today. Uh, and we're optimistic that has potential to assist in the more short-term recovery efforts. Um, and obviously there are going to be a lot more long-term matters that need to be handled, especially on roads like Pine Nook where massive undertakings are needed. But for the sake of getting that road accessible in time for Eagle Brook to begin its fall session, um, this program could really be a godsend. Uh, Carolyn and I, we were both in attendance at the rural school aid hearing that took place on July 20th. Um, that resulted in the resolution that you approved earlier this evening. Thank you for that. Um, I also attended a pre-submittal meeting with Alex Nichols that day, um, who is the founder and chief engineer of Florent. Uh, they intend to open a research laboratory and manufacturing facility at 10 Greenfield Road. 
Their proposal will be going before the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals in the near future. Uh, open meeting law training was held uh, earlier this week. It was a great success. Um, the recordings are going to be sent out to everybody who was in attendance, as well as those who were invited but weren't able to make it. Uh, we really encourage people who weren't able to make it especially to view them and also people who did make it to go back and watch because you might pick something new up from them. Um, I learned a lot from it personally, and even I had been through open meeting law trainings before, but it's just such a nuanced uh, topic that there's always something to learn from those trainings. Um, huge thank you to town attorney Lisa Mead, who orchestrated that and was able to travel to us on a pretty cruddy weather day. It was it was raining pretty hard again on Monday, and she was here in good spirits. Um, I've been working with Assistant Town Clerk Cassie Sandorell on streaming, streamlining our appointment process uh, for relevant employees and volunteers. Uh, we're working to clear up some confusion because there's always, when it comes to appointment season, some confusion over who's select board appointed, who is moderator appointed. Um, we're working on creating a master list so that's a little bit easier for all of the involved parties, for the select board, for Pat, because she handles a lot of the administrative work involved in the reappointments every year, um, and for everybody else that gets involved in that process. Um, and finally, uh, I felt that we're going to mention that yesterday I attended a meeting with a representative from Civic Plus's accessibility team. So Civic Plus runs our website, um, and that was about ADA accessibility on our website. It was a really informative meeting. Um, case law from the past couple of years uh, has cemented the fact that the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, uh, it requires public spaces to be accessible to individuals with disabilities. And we obviously knew that to the be the case with physical spaces, but it's really been cemented in case law that that also applies to virtual spaces such as websites. Um, now, the process of making a website ADA accessible isn't always as straightforward as making a physical building ADA accessible might be, um, but there are a lot of things such as uh, making sure that it's compatible with screen readers for people who are visually impaired, um, things of that nature. A scan of our website measured a rating of 68% accessibility, which is below average. Um, we do want to make sure that that gets better, and he proposed a couple of solutions that unfortunately aren't going to be free. We are going to have to evaluate how to pay for them, um, but it is something that we definitely want to keep on our radar um, because we really want to make sure that we're not opening ourselves up to liability through having a website that's not ADA accessible. So uh, I'm going to be reporting more on that as more comes of that, but that's that's an undertaking that's in progress in my office. Thank you. Um, and that's all I had for you right now. Does anybody have any questions? Um, I do have one thing. Um, we, were, we got a request for a comment about the Florent um, application. And the only thing that, um, that I was going to su suggest from the Select Board standpoint is there their application includes uh, quote uh, release of emissions and um, so I was gonna did did either of you see Trevor or Carolyn did you see that request for comment I, I asked Chris to um, reach out and verify um, what do they mean by emissions what is being emitted when is it being emitted how often and um, in the amount and quantities yeah, yeah that's basically what i was going to suggest what is it's a carbon dioxide so florent is um looking to use uh if i understand correctly um the residue from processing hemp oh to right. create this is the new facility yeah, yeah. And down at uh, you know the the former deerfield plastics or whatever that oh, was oh okay they're going to use space there to and to to in, the, in in making battery storage systems, so okay. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but they're related with they're they're tied into UMass. Okay, so it's an emerging business, huh. and um, I mean we want to be supportive. Yes, but um, I just think it's important that we look at. I mean those it should be easily answered, right? Yeah, yeah. and I how think, often, whatever, what it is, yeah. and and the yeah. quantity. And I think it requires planning board approval and perhaps ZBA approval. I, I don't know, a special permit. I'm not. Yeah. But in any case, that was the thing that stuck out to me uh, because I know that um, when we were going through the approval for um, NUPRO, um, there was concern in the community about emissions and, and to the extent that we can verify everything. That's and we want to clarify there was no emissions 
at New Grove. Right. I mean, that right. seems to still be some of the discussion. I, I mean, once randomly, once in a while, I get a phone yeah. call. So there is none. Uh, there is none. We've had a couple of people come to our meetings and talk about that, and there is no admissions. Right. This says there's slight admissions, but you just have to know what they are. What they're talking is, about carbon dioxide, it? but they're they're. In any case, this is this is the point that yeah. I think is kind of important. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can make sure that that question gets documented um, and sent over to the planning board and ZBA for their discussion at their meeting as being the comment that the select board had. So one thing I had that I uh, neglected to get on the agenda, but wanted to mention it to you guys is that um, uh, DPC had mentioned that um, the uh, Betterments? Not the betterments. Um, I know I'm leaving that up to you to, to work with. Um, the uh, the mass the, the SRF, the state revolving fund, is uh, taking applications for asset management plan and updates where they're paying um I want to say, let's see, the this program provides grants up to $150,000 or 60% of the total eligible costs. Um whichever is less. They were figuring um, DPC identified a potential use in this attractive grant program to assist in evaluation your existing infrastructure. We did ours last in 2015, so we haven't really done any um, evaluation since then. Um, the, the fee for the preparing and submitting the application is like Thirty-seven hundred bucks. Um, if the town is listed on the intended use plan as a result of the application and moves forward, they credit that amount back to us. Um, so I was saying, well, how much? You know, how much are we really looking at if we wanted to to move forward with this? He said, it attached fee. Please find a proposal for submitting the asset management grant application on the town's behalf. Also included are some examples of different sized projects. You could see how the grant program distributes costs between grant in-kind services. For example, the impl implementation of a $100,000 project may cost the town about $12,000. Um, we would develop a scope and work with you once we have it. We haven't really done an asset management plan for um, our storm management. We've done our, um, we obviously did both plants and we did our, uh, we, we did our, we did our, um, you know, two plants, and then we did our piping, but a lot of the piping, well, is old, and we haven't really looked since 2015, so we could tr um, see if we could get that grant. Again, if we get the grant, they would reduce, um, they would give us the feedback, and they would, uh, we would just pay whatever that percentage is of the job, and they, they said that you can use in-kind um, match and then, um, but we haven't done any stormwater evaluation. We've done a little bit here and there, like Kevin's asked here and there, and he has money set aside for I and I and stuff. So we have money budgeted to take advantage of this, and we could. It might be worth doing. And he said, you know, if you I, just I would be supportive of ap applications had to go in. Like he needed to know by today if we wanted to proceed, because I think he oh, needs well, to have them in is, by this is an item not anticipated. It isn't. He would need to, I guess okay. applications are due by August 11th. He said an email back that you're interested is fine. And then we could get something on the agenda. But it's up yeah. to you guys if you wanted to try and take advantage well, of it for one or uh, the other. We it is an item unanticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, you're bringing it up, but I feel like we have consensus, so um, we can either vote it now, mm -hmm. and so you can tell them to get started on it, or we could put it up for our next meeting. Yeah, which is the ninth. Yeah, that's fine. To think, officially uh, vote it, right? Officially vote it. But I would yeah. say we should have, have if it's due by August 11th. Yeah, the ninth is not going to be soon enough, so he no. needs to know now. Yeah, if we, he said well, if you just email him that something. we're interested, he he could get this application going. We could see if we even get it, you know, kind of thing. Well, then, I, I I would suggest then that let's vote on it so that we can authorize him to move forward with the application because there's only a couple of days. Between. I mean, he could work on it based right. on consensus, exactly. but that he why, do that for why sure. just 
why yeah. not just vote on it? And then the you other, could re-vote it on the August 9th. And I think there's quite a bit of money in that SRF fund for this specific thing. Uh, there, could, so we supposedly well we're putting so much money on yeah. it. We, we and should. we never really take advantage right. of the SRF. So right. this would be one way that we could do that. Um, would Even you want him to do our, for that. Right, a lot of them we aren't. This, I know. this we would be able to... Um, do, do you want him to do just the sewer and water or do you want him to, I mean, the sewer, or do you want, do you want to look at the, um, or would you rather just hold off on that and look could, at, could, could look at the drainage and stuff? Or, well, I, I mean, that's part of our big problem, right? Right. So why not have, based on our losses, current losses, mm -hmm. and based on the work that we're trying to do in Bloody Brook, yeah, and based on the fact that you know, you all, I say it all the time, 18 to 20 inches water table increase. I've been I was on, that all the time now because of you. Yeah, well, <laughs> since I was true. on the planning board in the 80s, yeah. we got problems. So yeah. let, and people run their sub pumps. They, they have to be running their sub pumps crazy okay. in this kind of weather. So let's do it. All right. Let's, let's, and uh, corporate, so, is it all right with yeah, you? Yeah, it's fine with me. I mean, we're talking about both what the 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 remainder of sewer pipes that we don't know about plus the infiltration question right and and you mentioned that there's i and i money in this in there the is dpw and budget. i'll check with kevin to yeah. make sure but yeah he usually puts like 90 away a year to do i and i work and i don't know what he has it zeroed in on i don't want to speak for him at all right. but just 3700 bucks to get it started and then we could look at you know what the cost is you know mm -hmm. if we get the grant cuz it okay. sounds like you know yeah I think that's a it good makes, idea. So I smart money, yeah. you know, to get to get a good evaluation. It's been a while since we've done all that stuff. We have done some work too, so it'd be good to really understand. So would DPC be be doing the application for us? Yes, they'll okay. do the application right. for us, and they'll credit us back if they get the grant. Mm -hmm. So I make a motion to authorize DPC to pr pursue um, the, the SRF, SRF uh, asset funding uh, asset grant. allocation yeah. grant. Okay. And I'll second that. Good. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Right. All right. And uh, one final thing that uh, I think we mentioned before, but the HCA for Competence Analytics. Oh, great. I would yeah. like us to authorize Chris to contact um, the attorney from Mead's office and um, the, uh, yeah, representatives, we'll uh, yeah. uh, the representatives of uh, Competence Analytics and see if they would be willing to, maybe it's a one topic meeting where we all sit down and, and try to work through the last bump in the road to getting a finalized HCA. Um, the latest I've heard from um, Sunny Days, the, the owner of the project has said that uh, NASDOT is supposedly going to uh, give them a yay or nay on a curb cut access point in the next week or so. And, you know, the HCA needs to be in place so that this project can move forward. So I think we're in the position where if all of us are in the same room talking about the issue, we can get this thing resolved and sign it, um, you know, to the satisfaction of all parties. Uh, so I don't know if next week would be a potential meeting time, but I don't want to add it to another meeting because we all our meetings are so full. I know. Um, it would be nice if you could just focus on one issue. We're getting out here pretty early. Yeah. Helps that we started an hour early. No, we did. <laughs> we don't need to say that. So yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, it's not like we haven't been here for almost three hours. Yeah, I know. We're trying, you guys. But, We're trying. Yeah, anyway. Um. Okay. So, well, what do you think? I think yes. Chris, you're okay set with that direction? Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, do we have any particular dates that the board is thinking right now, or do we want to establish that via email later? I'm going on on August 2, but I'm not suggesting we want to do it. I'm just, you know. Um, I've win. got a meeting at 1 that day for sewer. Um, other than that. I, I'm fine for August 2nd. Yeah, I mean, as long as it doesn't conflict with Trevor. No, no. No, I've got a different one. What time are we thinking? I mean, what, and again, the subject is uh, there. There is a there's a analytics right. The, their HCA. There's one paragraph that is apparently holding this up, oh. and it's it's related to 
um, a licensing um, clause that says if the taxes are not paid on this property, then even though they're a lessor, that their their license could be held up or not renewed. Right. And they're worried that they don't own the property, but they're yeah, being, yeah. They're but they're on they're relying on Ken to pay his debt. Right. You know, the, whatever that entity is. And in, and our our legal counsel, rightfully so, says, look, this is an internal negotiation between the parties to this agreement. And maybe one potential solution would be for sunny days to decide, okay, we're going to separate these parcels, you know, right. so this is, this is parcel A and the rest is parcel B, which I have total control over. And, you know, maybe there's a way that parcel A can be limit, limit the liability of competence analytics to parcel A. Mm. A real estate taxes, I, you know, but we have yeah. to talk about I'm this. Talking and, through, right? You know, the the select board could say we want to remove this clause, even if our attorneys are telling us we shouldn't. Right. You know, so, but right. So, but we we can't keep doing this by email. No, no, we've got to get it sorted out and done, and for them, and yeah, they've been waiting long enough. And okay. well, it seems I'm, like I'm there's no resolution unless we get in the same room together. Right. So it's like. A five o'clock or a six o'clock. What would be better? Yeah, for you, I Trevor? could do that. I could even do um, three, two o'clock. Yeah, I could even do a two o'clock or uh, maybe a or two thirty or something or yeah, three, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I could take the afternoon. I've I've got to take some time off. I've just been burnt out at work, mm -hmm. so I could do that. So August two, we could do afternoon or we could do early evening. Yeah, yep. sort of depends Either on. One. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, just so everybody knows, um, Casey did reach out to Mr. Mosley earlier this week about setting up a meeting with him uh, just to kind of individually go over that same point. So if we can get that ironed out this week and then present it to the board at that meeting next week, I think we'd be in good shape. Yeah, I and mean, we just want to make sure that at the end of the meeting, both our lawyers and their lawyers agree that we're resolving this question. Yeah, what is the forward to meeting forward them to them. be there is a key element. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll so did we did we pick a specific time? Uh, uh, in the afternoon, whatever's good for everybody. Okay. In the Trevor says after, he's after two. After two thirty yeah, to two thirty on to oh. six o'clock anytime. Okay. All right. We'll take a look at what's going on in the building, and I'll I'll let you all know. That way, two yeah. thirty. Two thirty to six anytime. Yep. Perfect. Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second. Oh, I'll second. Vote. All right. All oh, those in favor? So, I'll second what he did or he said. <laughs> All those in favor. Tim LGI. Trevor Nessai. Trevor McDaniel. Hi. Great.